It's been a brilliant summer of cricket, but we are not quite done yet. The best of the best from the men's and women's game are in London, along with the finest cricket brains. And over the next three hours, we will find out the makeup of the eight squads that will compete in the brand new competition, The Hundred. It's never been done before in British sport. These guys in the eight pods have to put together a squad using a draft system. The head coaches had their advisors with them and they will be on the clock and under pressure. We'll have plenty of analysis as the squads take shape with the help of some star players on the sofa and Rob Key has a host of talent from the men's and women's game upstairs. Yeah, we have a pretty good side up here. Joss Butler, Kate Cross, Owen Morgan, Moen Ali, Johnny Besto, Chris Wokes, Saki Mahmood, Adil Rashid is there. Then over here we have Sam Curran, Jason Roy, Tom Banton, Anya Shrubsell, Sophie Eccleston, hiding in the corner, Catherine Brunt, Ravi Bopar and Sam Billings are here who are not yet with a team. They might be big winners tonight. We'll get back to you, Isha. It should be a fantastic evening and I cannot wait to see how it all unfolds. To build up on the sofa with me and NASA are two current World Cup holders. Yes, Joe and Joffre are joining us. But before we hear from them, let's find out what the 100 is all about. So, what is the 100? Well, it's still cricket. He is kind of blind now. But different. 100 balls. And every one counts. Eight new teams across seven cities. The best players from around the world in rivalries redefined. New tactics and a platform for new heroes to inspire the next generation. It's bold, it's bright, it's fast, and everyone's invited. This is The 100. Everyone is invited. Welcome along. We're going to start with these three. Nasser, I'm going to come to you first because you were at the beginning of 2020, as it was called back then, back in 2003, at the Rose Bowl as it was. It was a step into the unknown for us as players and as you as a commentator. Similarities with this competition? Yeah, I think that was slightly different. That was a massive step, you know, even for players. Players turned up thinking it was a bit of a hit and giggle, quickly realised it was more serious than that and more lucrative. Ex-players said it would be the death of bowling. Might as well have a bowling machine out there. And you've looked and you've seen bowlers. Actually, the shorter the game, the bowlers have become more and more important. This is not so much a, a leap in, you know, the, the, the um, format. It's only 20 balls less. It's a, it's a rain delay at Headingley in a blast game. <laughs> That's all it is. But what it is, looking around this room, is an absolute step up in quality. You look at the cricket brains in this room, there are some serious coaches in here. You look at the list of the names on that blast, on this, sorry, on this draft, they are some serious of names. Funny lots names. of them, <laughs> lots of names. So I think that's where the step up is going to be. The step up in quality is absolutely huge. Joe, Joffre, an absolute pleasure to have you with us. Joffre, I'll start with you. Fast-paced, the 100, with a lot of swag. This is made for you, isn't it? <laughs> uh, I can say that, but as you said, you know, it's fast-paced. Um, every ball counts, and you never know. It's that, well, you never know where we're going to be at the end of the tournament. Hopefully, um, our boys can take it all the way. Have you seen and felt the buzz around the place? Because I've seen you doing a few shoots for the 100. What's it been like when you go out and see the youngsters who we're trying to get to come and watch and play and be involved in cricket? It's been great. I think, um, as you say, it's a great opportunity to expand the game, to grow it. Um, slightly different audiences have obviously been targeted. Um, and with the quality of players on show, uh, if we get good surfaces, good plays, you're always, always in for a, a great bit of entertainment. That, that's the exciting thing. I mean, you've been around the place in IPLs and in big bashes. You throw the dressing room up in the air and start again. You make new friends, you can learn off other people, you can get ideas off the coaches. How exciting is that and how much does that improve your cricket and improve the whole concept of the, the competition? Well, you know, even from the personal aspect, there's so much things you can learn. Funny enough, um, my hero was my first franchise coach and now he, he's followed me here. <laughs> <laughs> but. There's a vast array of knowledge, you know, from the coach to the support staff to even some of the players that are playing. So 
I think it'll be a really good opportunity, not just for me, but for everyone in the squad. Come on there, Jofra. I'm sure you've already spoken to Mahela, but, but what would your first picks be in your team tonight? Um, I'll have either Andre Russell or Mitchell Start for my first pick, either or. Fairly explosive. Who are you going with? Come on, you're up first as well, you Trent Rockets. Yeah. You plan at Trent it's Bridge as well, home. Yeah. Home venue. Home venue, new home venue for me. Um, I think you've got some very good mystery spinners in the, in the draft, so it'll be interesting to see who people go with first up. And what about the competition between the players? I saw it in the build-up. Joffre Archer was giving you a bit of banter, a bit of stick. Are you yeah, looking forward to taking yards. him down at Trembridge? <laughs> Against a new ball and uh, having not batted for a while, it was quite intimidating, <laughs> to be honest. So. Yeah, the hidden his sticks, not giving him sticks. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but it's, it's very exciting, isn't it? It's good. You've thought about the tactics and what might win this competition as a whole. What are the key couple of points that you would come to in terms of trying to build a squad? I think bowlers are absolutely vital. Um, obviously availability as well, you know, you're going to have to look at the future tour programme to see who is going to be around. Australians, you've got a few Australian coaches in the room. I think Australians are going to be around for 99% of it, so I think that's um, crucial. But also building something for the long term. Nothing really happens in a season, whether you go IPL, Big Bash or whatever, you're learning to start with. I'd advise any coach in the room, and they don't need my advice, is build long term, think of the future. And that's where you really generate some, uh, some quality teams. There's a few nods there. You said they don't need your advice. We'll get to that <laughs> a bit later. We've got a few players. We need more. Here's how the draft works. The 100 draft. Here are the key points. Each team has selected one England centrally contracted test player. Each team has also had the chance to select two players from their catchment counties ahead of the main draft tonight at whatever salary band agreed. Trent Rockets will have the first pick in the draft and they can pick from any player available. So the team that picks last in the first round will then pick first in the second round and so on and so on. If a team has picked a local icon at whatever salary band that was, they then skip that pick on the draft. Each team will end the main draft with 14 players plus their England centrally contracted player. There'll also be a chance for one player to become the wildcard draft pick, which will be picked after the Vitality Blast in July 2020. Each team can pick a maximum of three overseas players, but all three of those players can make it into the final playing 11. And that is your lot. Thanks for that, Rob. That's hopefully helped everyone understand how today it will work. Now, the 100 isn't just for the men. The women's competition will run alongside and will be fully integrated into the whole piece. I do my hair toss, check my nails. Baby, how you feeling? Good as so the women's team player selection process has two key stages. So stage one was the England players, two for each team, get signed by the head coach. Stage two, the other 13 players are signed, including three overseas stars. Boss up and change your life. You can have it all, no sacrifice. I know we did you wrong, we can make it right. A lot more money coming into the game um, and a chance to really start professionalising women's cricket as a whole, not just at the top level, is, is hugely exciting. It gives a chance for girls that are involved in our domestic cricket who have never been seen before on TV, in the radio, on, on paper, and give them a chance to shine, show their skill and then be an, a bit, another building block for them to make it to the next level. The head coach is in charge and it's free market so players can approach teams um, and be approached by anyone. So that's how the women's 100 will work. We can now hear from a couple of the female stars. They are with Rob Key. Yeah, two of England's best bowlers ever. Actually, three with Sophie Eccleston. But I'm going to speak to Catherine Brunt of the Trent Rockets and Anya Shrubsole of the Southern Brave. Anya, has there been a better time to be a cricketer in England, do you think? 
No, I don't think so. I think um, over the last couple of years, we've had two home World Cup victories. Um, and it's really, I guess, put cricket massively on the map here in this country and exciting new competition coming along now. So I think it's a, it's a great time to be a cricketer in England. Catherine, when you started, could you think that young players coming into the game now would have this opportunity? I would have hoped so, uh, with that being, you know, 15 years ago. <laughs> um, no, it's, it's come a long way, certainly in my time, and I'm just really happy to be a part of this, this next stage. Now, the Trent Rockets will have the first pick. Who would you pick if you had the choice? Um, for me, I think it's a, have always favoured all-rounders. Uh, I think the less of the game, sorry, less balls in the game, probably a bowling all-rounder. Uh, I'd probably go for um, either, um, sorry, Andre Russell. Oh, Rashid Khan. I think mystery spinners are really important. So, um, yeah, they'd be my two top picks. What about you, Anya? Who would you go for? Uh, a little bit similar to Catherine. Definitely Rashid Khan. Big ground at the Aegeus Bowl. I think spin's going to come into that. Bit of a potentially left field one. Shaki Balasan, brilliantly in the World Cup. Left arm spin, can bat, all round package. So I'd be kind of eyeing up those two. Like I said, a big ground down at the Aegeus. Well, we'll find out who they do pick, but thanks very much, girls. Well, more from the women's 100 as we go throughout the night, but now to the men's. 571 players wanted to be part of the 100, hence they entered tonight's draft. 240 of them from overseas, including some of the very best. There he is, the breakthrough man. Stark is on fire. Chris Gale, a solid blow down the ground. He really is a superstar. Century number nine for the world's best all-rounder. Brilliant. Fantastic batting. That'll be 100 for Steve Smith. Not for the first time in something tells me, not for the last. Port Yorker, brilliant. Larson Malinga at his best. The finger is oh! raised. Struck goal. Boom booms in the building. Here we go. What a century from Barbaraza. He's a special, special player. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful from Rabada. What a shot that is. That means the world to him. Oh, look at that ball. Has he done it again? That is a ridiculous hit. That's colossal. Back to back World Cup centuries for the New Zealand skipper. And another very fine innings. Some huge names on show. Who will be the first picks and who will miss out? This is the grid that we will be referring to all evening. The first band is the 125k category with 13 picks available. And we can now hear from some of the decision makers on the floor with Ian Ward. You've got Trent Rockets coach Stephen Fleming. Yeah, lots to sort out. Now, Flem, you've been around the world with these sort of competitions. This one's slightly different because it's a new format. How excited are you to be involved? Probably a little bit more nervous at the moment, <laughs> more than excited. But um, no, there's a great buzz around, isn't there? And I think the point that was made by Joe is that the condensing of talent always makes for a great competition, no matter what format. So you see the stars that are, are here today and also on the screen. It's, it's a lot of choice, a lot of decision making for us, but um, it's going to be a great pool of talent. How's the planning gone? Uh, well, the, the best thing is that we've got the only piece of certainty, which is the first pick, but the responsibility of that, I'm still listening to people now about who we should choose. Uh, but from then on, it, it's, uh, that's where you get the nerves. You just don't know what the plans of, um, of other teams are going to be. So you end up picking 20 or 30 teams, and there's no doubt you're going to get some player envy at some stage. Big advantage to pick first? Yeah, I, I think so, just because it sets things off, and, and at least you can sort of start planning for, for your next stage rather than waiting on others to... Um, to see Shane Warren's been very upset. He's been chuntering all day about it. It's about the only thing that's ever gone wrong in his career. So, <laughs> so we'll try and maximise that. Who's your first pick? No, don't answer that. We'll get to that in just a moment. We're talking about Shane. Likes playing a bit of poker. You got your best poker face on tonight? You all set? Uh, well, I think as, you know, as long as Flem looks after us, uh, you know, we seem to be worried about what Flem wants to do over there. He's Have you been carrying us... on all day, like he suggests? 
Probably. <laughs> I probably have. Oh, look, it's been fantastic. I think all of us have been going through the different scenarios of what could happen. Uh, us down the back with us and Dan, we played golf this morning talking about how many pens we've been through, about crossing it out. But I think it's an exciting time for the players. It's an exciting time for us. It's a blank canvas. You can set up a team that whatever way you want to play, your style of play, your brand of cricket. Um, we're very lucky that we've got Owen Morgan, who's a terrific captain, um, and working with him is going to be great. You went sort of left field with the Rajasthan Royals, first year of IPL and won it. What can we expect from you today? Something different from you, Shane? Um, most likely, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Spin to win? Spin to win, what is, uh, I think everyone knows in T20 cricket, spinners have been very successful. So if you can get some spin up the front, um, it's going to help. Good luck. Thanks, Thanks very much mate. indeed. Right, let's get on with it. Ish, get us started. It's time to get to the main event. Good luck to everyone involved. 13 picks in this round, 100 seconds each. Trent Rockets, you are first up. You are on the clock from now. Who are you going for? So, Nas, who are you going, going for? Come on. It's got to be Rashid uh, Khan. I'm going for a bowler. It? Rashid Khan, Andre Russell. Yep, look who they're going for. It looks like they've made their pick already. That was quick. Confirmed. Rashid Khan. We wondered if he would be the number one pick. So it is Rashid Khan that will go to the Trent Rockets, the first pick of the 100 draft. So the Southern Brave are on the clock and they are deliberating now. Mahela Jaya Wharton is the head coach. Giles White's in charge of cricket down at Hampshire. Martin Nicholas is one of the advisors for that city. Joffre Archer has already spoken. He wants Andre Russell. Is he going to go is Andre gonna, Russell? Is he going to get Dre Russ? <laughs> is he going to get Dre Russ? Big hitter. Ruchi, quickly, you're OK with Rashid? Absolutely. Over the moon. Over the moon. James Vince and Chris Jordan in this uh, side as well for the Southern Brave. Yeah, so just to confirm, the Trent Rockets have Rashid Khan now with Alex Hales, Harry Gurney and, of course, Joe Root when available. They're taking their time, aren't yeah, they? They, Maybe they wanted Rashid Khan and they're going for They must have B. known that They've the Rockets had months to prepare for this. <laughs> <laughs> who are you going second, Nas? Come on, who are you going second? Stark, Russell, those sort of guys. It's Andre Russell, yeah. it's Dre Russ has gone He's second. You got your Joffre. wish, Joff, how does that, how does that go down? Uh, very good, you know, I um, grew up watching him play a lot of cricket and just glad I'll be able to get to um, you know, pick his brain. Hopefully he can hit Seriously it with him. Seriously dynamic. Well, you got some Seriously. pace there, boy, with yourself and Dre Russ and CJ. Yeah. Who's going to bowl at the death? You going to do your super over again? No, I put the names in a hat and pull one up. OK, well, the Northern Supercharge have gone for Aaron Finch. Ben Stokes is one of their players. So Aaron Finch at the top. So they've got an opening batsman, Nass. Rashid as the spinner and David Willey, left arm spinner. He could open the batting, actually, with Aaron Finch as a pinch hitter. Yeah, Welsh that, fire that's a clock. good pick. Finch is a good pick. This, they, I think they need a bowler here, Welsh fire. You look at the picks they've got already. Bairstow, Ingram, Banton. That's your top three. They absolutely need a bowler. Welsh it's to, fire. It's got to be Mitchell Stark, isn't it? Picks in. Yeah, you yes. got it right, Ish. It's Mitchell Stark. So Johnny Bairstow, Mitchell Stark joins him. Colin Ingram and Tom Banton. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Johnny's happy with that. Oval Invincibles are on the clock. They've got Sam Curran. They've already pre-selected Jason Roy in this round. So this is the only pick they'll have in the 125k round. And Tom Curran later on. Spin maybe. Another opening batsman for Jason Roy to go out with. Good pitch at the Oval. Oh, Sonny and Orion, good yeah. pick. He could open the batting. Pinch and spin, yeah. and yeah. the mystery good, spin. Good combined cricketer, that. In terms of someone like Sonny and Orion, the domestic players, as we go down the list, won't have seen much of him. No, absolutely. You better, you better have a good wicketkeeper as well. Don't forget your wicketkeepers in these. So that's well, a good pick. This is a team that I thought would go for Sonny and Orion, but Sonny and Orion's gone, gone. So they've gone for Tahir. World class player, world class spinner all around the Two world. Two leggies. Two leggies, Spin Parkinson to win. and Imran to here to join Joss Butler and Saqib Mahmood. Now, Warney's only got one pick in this round because Owen Morgan has been pre-selected for the second pick in the 125. So it's Burns, Rory Burns, Morgan and Dan Lawrence they've pre-selected. This is a massive, massive pick because he doesn't get another chance. Until Who do you want, Morgs? 23. Does <laughs> he make that? Does he want a power hitter? I know he likes Darcy Short. Does he want some good bowling? To hear, to hear might have thrown him a bit, actually, because it was only 60 grand, so might have presumed that Tahir was coming lower down. Who do you want, Morgs? Oh, that's what you've got, Morgs. You happy with that? Glenn Maxwell. Very not, happy. not going to say anything else, <laughs> is he? He can offer a bit of spin as well, but Glenn Maxwell going to the London Spirit. Birmingham Phoenix on the clock. Again, these guys can only pick once in this round. 
just to, be, to wait a long time. And just to be clear, some players have put their reserve price in this bracket at 125, but you can select from any of them. So I think the pick is in, and it's Liam Livingston who's gone for a top whack wow. 125, local domestic player. We wondered if that might have happened. There you go. There you go, Mo, happy? Yeah, Mo's happy. So we've okay. skipped through the second pick just to keep you up to date with London Spirit because they've got Maxwell and Morgan in this round. So Manchester Originals are on the clock and they have just selected Imran Tahir, who will they go second time round. I mean, big for Liam Livingston. And we sort of wondered if some domestic players would be bought at that bracket, not all overseas. Yeah, maybe saving for further down with the overseas, to be honest. So Manchester, will they go for a local lad or at least someone? Yeah, Dane Vias is not local, but he played there in the blast last summer, so he knows the ground. He played very well for him as well. That's a good pick. OK, That's so skip pick. past the Oval Invincibles because they've got Jason Roy as their number two pick in this round. So we're on to Welsh Fire, who selected Mitchell Stark first up. Spin, I know it's a small ground straight, and spinners don't like that, but... Majib? Yeah. Warner still hasn't gone. Will they go for a batter? Chris Gale hasn't gone. Yep. Picks in. Steve Smith. Steve will be joining Smith. Mitchell Stark, Johnny Bairstow. Gone for the Aussies. So who's worried out there right now? Chris Gale, Gale. If you, and if you David, are, David Warner. If you have put your reserve price at 125, if you are not picked in this round, you are not taking part in the 100 less year unless injury prevents someone else playing and you replace so them. You, you could have Finch and Warner here. There's could Mahindra have. available at 125. He's a Rabada, but I'm not sure about his availability. They've got Mujib, who was on at 60k. Oh, Rash is happy. Spin to win, Rash, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> right. Who are, we, who are we running out of time for them? Certainly Chris Gale, Lassif Malinga, Southern Brave... Where's David Warner? Where's David Warner? David Warner hasn't been picked. So Andre Russell was the first pick, a good pick from the Southern Brave. Remember, they've got James Vince, Chris Jordan and, of course, Joffre Archer. Do they want a spinner? Are they looking for a spinner? Picks in. Let's get it confirmed. David oh. Warner will go to the Southern Brave. OK, Joff? Yeah. Get on with Dave, all right. get on with Dave, get on with Dave Ladder, right, dear? A few quiet, co few quiet coffees during the Ashes in the World Cup with Dave Warner. Uh, okay. He gets it's very quiet, all right, yeah, all right. Yeah. <laughs> right. A lot more with Steve Trent Smith, Rockets, the last pick wow. in the first round. They've gone for Darcy Ooh. Short. That's a good pick, Nas. What do you reckon? Let's take a little bit of a breath. Firstly, actually, Joe, I'm going to come to you. So the two selections for your team in that, Rashid Khan and Darcy Short, you were there already. Alex Hales was there already and Harry Gurney. What do you reckon? Good, you're starting to see teams um, sh take a little bit of shape, aren't you, already? Um, someone like Rash has got unbelievable record around the world where he's been, had a lot of success. You look around, uh, the first round in general, there's a lot of spin on there, mm. um, whether it be all-rounders or, or genuine out-and-out -out spinners. So, um, shows, as Warney said, spin plays a massive part in these short formats. Joff, you're happy, aren't you, with what you got there? Yeah. What other name stands out for you, then? Anyone else that you... Any surprises there? Liam Livingston, one of the... Domestic players in there early? Not really, you know, he was at Rajasthan with me, so I perfectly know what he's capable of. Um, I wouldn't mind playing some more cricket with Darcy either. If he'd taken him, I would have been happy as well. What do you reckon, Nas? I'll tell you who's the happiest man on the planet, Imran Tahir. Put himself in as a reserve price of 60 grand. He's gone for 125 grand. <laughs> he's gone off on one of those celebrations <laughs> that he does into the crowd. That is a... Uh, a good signing. I mean, Shane Warne said you spin to win, and this is my point. You start looking at that grid now, and already you are seeing high mm. quality. And sometimes you judge a, a tournament by the players that don't get picked. Malinga, Gale, maybe they feel they're just past this. Yeah, he's so as well. Yeah. Yep. That might be an availability thing. Possibly. And Keezy here yeah, to cock. Yep. Right. Rob Key's upstairs. Who you got? I've got a brand new Southern Brave and Andre Russell. Andre, how does that feel? You're going to the Aegeus spot. Uh, feeling good. Um, you know, I was nervous before. You know, <laughs> first time being at a draft and, you know, this new competition, you know, it's um, a lot to offer. And, you know, the game I've been evolving for the last couple of years. So, um, 100 ball, it's definitely C ball, hit ball. <laughs> Get to play with Joffre Archer as well. What would that be like? Yeah, of course. Um, you know, I don't have to worry about my head. <laughs> so, um, you know, he's a, he's a great character, um, you know, his, his skills and everything. And I would just add to bowling 90, try to bowl faster than him. 
Who else do you get? You've got David Warner as well. So that's a pretty good side from what you've got so far. James Vince, Chris Jordan, Joffre Archer, yourself, and David Warner. Yeah, interesting. Um, I hope that we can, you know, get some some good players to top it off. Um, you know, if we have a very good team, balance everywhere, I think we can do it. So go south. Are you doing flying home tomorrow? What are you up to? Yeah, I'm leaving tomorrow. Back to training, you know, preparing for you know, tournaments to come. Um, so can't wait for next year, though. All right, best of luck, mate. Well done. All right, man. Cheers. Massive signing for the Southern Brave. He got that shirt on quick enough, didn't he? Right, let's get some reaction from the floor. Ian Ward, who have you got? Well, Andrew McDonald is the head coach of the Birmingham Phoenix, but tonight it is Daniel Vittori, so we're going to call it the Birmingham Beard, because that's a magnificent beard. Tell us why you've gone for that selection of Liam Livingston. We all expected the high-profile names like Chris Go. You see it differently. Oh, I think you know, back end of the draft, it's all we wait and see what everyone played out. But I think most successful teams around the world have been built, built on domestic players, and that's what we're hoping for. How much are you also building on trying to get a culture going throughout, not just for next year, but maybe the year after and the year after that? Yeah, I think it's an important part that you look at the not just this draft, but how long those sorts of players can contribute, and, and the domestic players are always going to be there, so that's what we're hoping for. About, you know, 100 balls, not a lot less than T20, but it's enough. How much have you thought about the tactics and fitting the players in around those tactics? Well, I think that will come once we feel, get a feel for the players, but I think the, the constants will remain true. Your top order batters are really important, and, and bowlers, spinners in particular, and that death bowling, if you can cover those options, I think you'll go well. You've got Andrew on Skype. Is he going OK down in Australia? He looks a bit nervous. <laughs> He's back to you. Thanks, Dan. Thank you very much. So the first picks are in for round one. Thank you very much to Joe and Joffre. We're going to take a quick break, but do not go anywhere because we've got round two next.
Welcome back to The 100 Draft. You can get all the latest news and views and what happens tonight at skysports.com forward slash The 100. So we have had the first round in the first ever draft in British sport. The first draft, of course, in The 100. Not many big surprises. Liam Livingston will be a happy man. Dan Vyas will be a happy man. A couple who have missed out, but some big names in there with the likes of Rashid Khan, Andre Russell, Mitchell Stark and David Warner and, of course, Stephen Smith. Next, though, we're going to get into round two, but we're also going to hear from two more World Cup winners. Roy and Bairstow, they have a phenomenal record together. They're going to go hard. Normal service is resumed for England. I came to get this party jumping as it can be. I came to get this party live. Are you with me? I came to start the party because I'm the party starter. So if that beat ain't knocking, let's get it knocking harder. High five punching during that VT between Johnny and Jason. Now, while well, I was down at wherever it was, Cardiff, and he was on doing the Man of the Match award, and he was saying, you two get on really well. And you said to me off Travis, we don't get on that well. <laughs> we got on well this summer, though. That was brilliant. Yeah, we got on pretty well. I think, I think we did the, did the job for the team. What do you reckon to that selection, then, for your team, the Oval Invincibles? Sonny I'm happy with Sonny. Yeah, well done. Well done, fellas. <laughs> Top work over there. Um, yeah, got some, we've got some work to do, though. I think we've got a, got a good round coming up now and some big players, so fingers crossed. You happy? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, our top five picks have, uh, have gone, so we're missing out in this round. But um, absolutely, I mean, you look at the, the names in that lineup, there's uh, the serious firepower. And obviously, we've got Starkey to uh, so hopefully knock them over at the top. Well, absolutely. You've got quality batters in there. But, but what about the, the bowling? How important is that in a competition like this? Well, it is. But if you score enough runs, then <laughs> the cards are some Smash them down. Yeah, exactly. Look, I mean, there's so many, there's so many more picks to go. and. Um, I think that we'll definitely be looking for some, uh, some quality spin uh, in our next picks. I had a chance to play against David Warner in the IPL. Yeah. Chance to play with Steve Smith now. Are you looking forward to that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we saw, we saw how well he played this summer. Um, we know the quality of player that he is. And I think that, um, obviously, coming back into England and playing in a new competition, he'll be keen to impress and, and start all over again. Right, let's confirm the grid. Let's get on with round two. Just to remind you how this one's going to go. These players will be going for £100,000 and Welsh Fire will not be competing in this round because they've already pre-selected Ingram and young Tom Banton. Only one pick for Northern Superchargers, Southern Brave and the Trent Rockets because they've already pre-selected Alex Hales at this number. Trent Rockets, you're on the clock in round two. Well, one thing they do need is a keeper. Are they going to look for a keeper in this pick. Yeah, they need a bit of pace as well, I'd say. Up front, a little bit of pace. Well, Picks pick come in. in. Who is it? All-rounder from Somerset, Lewis Gregory, hard hitter, excellent finisher, good in the Johnny's just order. said good shout, why? Well, he bats bowls fields. We saw how explosive he's been in the, uh, in the competition over the last couple of years. Um, yeah, ticks all the boxes, doesn't he? So, yeah, I think it's a good pick. Spin for me for this next pick. Okay. You've got to have some spin, surely. You've got a lot of pace. Russell, you've got Jordan, you've got Archer. Need a little bit of pace off. Have a nabby, maybe. So big ground as well, yeah. Home player. player. Yeah. Home player. That the ticks, culture knows the ground. Ticks a lot of ball, uh, ball you know, bases there. Pace off. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. <laughs> Wake up, Dre Russ. Come on, bud. That's a good pick. That is a good pick. So Superchars are on the, the clock. What are they looking at, would you reckon, Nas? They've got spin there with Majib and Rashid. We've got a couple of power hitters available. Batting up top. Chris Lynn. That's, yeah. Yeah, Rash is happy with that. Uh, Jason was just saying, actually, Chris Lynn would be a good shout. Mm. What do you reckon here, Joe Roy? Yeah, well, that's their pick, isn't it? I don't know. <laughs> no, what do you reckon here? Now, Tom, your boys Lynn. are on it. He wanted I'll leave Lynn. it up to the brain box of Mr Solanke over there. You can... <laughs> Tom, who are you going for? Tom Moody, the coach. Come on, lads. Sam yeah, Billings, nice like that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Explosive Class hitter, player. power yeah, hitter. 360 player, happy with him. And a keeper. Yep. Yeah, and not a bad fella, so that helps. <laughs> Only not bad? What's that? Only not bad? Not bad, yeah, yeah, yeah. let's stick it up. Posh. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> 
OK, Manchester Originals have gone for Phil Salt, local player, talented boy, yeah. smashes it, top, top of the order. Top order batsman yeah. as well. well that, that's a really good selection, top order batsman. You want to see domestic players in this draft, you want them learning from the best coaches and the best players, and Philip Salt will definitely do that. Well, London Spirit only had one pick in 1-2-5. They've got two here, and they'll come round quickly. Yeah, two, very quick. They get this one and then another one in three goes time. Just going back to Phil Salt, played in the CPL final recently. And uh, we've got a few players still available. Mohamed Nabi's available at the moment. Oh, you picked it, Ish. There oh, you go. There go. Oh, there what do you reckon, Ness? Outstanding Smacks. cricketer. Smacks. For someone who just bowls regulation off spin, his stats in T20 cricket are brilliant. Brilliant in the bash, gives it a smash. He is a really good cricketer. Good pick, Shane Moore. So Birmingham Phoenix are on the clock. They will pick this one and the next one as well. So they've got what, 200 seconds to get two players. What are we looking at here then, would you say? I, I would say a top order batsman. They've got a bit, of, a bit of bowling in there. Maybe another spinner, a bit of mystery spinner. Are there any other mystery spinners? they can go for at this stage. Do they want an all-rounder? Shane Watson? Lama Shane, maybe. Lama Shane, I was just yeah. thinking there. Well, Andrew McDonald is the head coach of Birmingham Phoenix, and he's in Australia because he's looking after some of the Australian cricketers. So Daniel Vittori is number two. So he's here in London. Mo watches on. Who are you going with, Mo? <laughs> Who are you going with? Williamson, oh, oh he picked it. I <laughs> think he's been in the think tank. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we wondered about that, power players, but it, there's a place in... Kane Williamson uh -huh. can get in any format. If you, if you said the best all-round cricketer in world cricket, Williamson would be up there, to be honest. New Zealand, a little bit availability problems, but he is an outstanding guy and an outstanding Captain. cricketer. Captain, which you've got to decide as well. They've done well there, haven't they? Just uh, one overseas player, Birmingham Phoenix. Mm. We've got a couple more to. to wicket keepers, one. don't forget your wicket keepers. Yeah. At some stage, they're going to have to think, you know, the likes of Alex Carey, cricketers like that, are very good, still out there waiting to be picked. Crunching the numbers, who's available? Who do they want later down? I mean, you could end up with an overseas. Bolt down is still team. available, yeah, isn't it? Strength Bolt, I Strength Bolt, yeah. yeah. Dan Vittori want to go with another Kiwi? Well, let's see this one. I oh. think that's it. Well, massive form from Bapara at Essex toward the end. I and mean, he's going to Sussex next yeah. year. You lost a good one there. That's Time, timing is everything. Time the Halfway run. through the ball. All good, Rav? <laughs> no wonder he's smiling. <laughs> Drinks are on 100 you. 100 grand, Rav. Rav. Happy it, days. Coffees are on you up there. Get your Phoenix shirt on, Rav. Yeah. <laughs> Back to the spirit then. Warren has had a, a long time to think about this. Seema. Johnny Bairstow says Seema. Bolt, no, no. Don't Here we got, yeah. Trent Bolt's available. Jason Roy wants Bolt. Yeah. He wants people to hold off Trent Bolt. Yeah. Leave him alone, Shane. <laughs> Dwayne Bravo also available. Come on. All rounder. Go on, Jarrett. What are you going to say? I just don't want them to go for Trent. <laughs> <laughs> what about Mohamed Amir? He's going to be available next summer. He's not playing test cricket. Left arm seamer. Depends what they want. Warney's going to pull something. The straight. Kiwi's available for a lot of them. They're available for a lot of yeah. well, The Future Tour programme does have an influence on, on some of this with some of the overseas commitments. Yeah. Well, the pick is in. Let's just get it confirmed. Mohamed Amir. Left arm and available. And available. It's a good yep. pick. Pace. So That's overseas players gone. Yeah, That's Maxwell, right. Mohammed Nabi, and Mohammed Amir. So it's domestic only from now on in for London Spirit. Manchester Originals, I think, are nearly ready to make their selection quite quickly. This is a big one for them because they miss out in the next round. They do. 100k pick. Gone for Tom Abel at 100 grand. Domestic players have. You'd be Not happy with that, Ness, wouldn't you? Yep. Quit in the back pocket. Oval Invincibles are on the clock. J come on then, Jay Roy. Come on, Vic Who is Tom and Vic Cram? Come on, Tom. You're going to go for here. I wonder what's going on. The think tank. Come on, lads. You weren't involved in the think tank? No. <laughs> Were you not? <laughs> I'm, not <laughs> yeah, I'm not interested at all. I'm sure they got it under control there. 
Oh, he's, in. Yeah, he's pleased with this one, Tom Moody. Sandeep Lamachane from Nepal. A couple of mystery spinners in there, Lamachane, yeah, Narine. Like right, so that is the we'll end of the round two. Johnny, you stay as you are. Joe Roy seems to be OK with what's been happening there from his team, the Oval Invincible. So the selections from round two, Gregory, Dawson, Lynn, didn't do with the Welsh fire. Uh, Billings goes in there, Salt, Nabby. Williamson is in. Um, upstairs is Rob Key. Who you got? I'm very happy, Sam Billings. You're now at the Oval Invincibles. How does that feel? Were you nervous first? Yeah, a little bit. Rabbit and I were the only two who weren't selected in the, um, out of the English players here. So, yeah, the lads were having a bit of a laugh um, at our expense earlier. But, yeah, very happy. So just tell us, do you have any idea where you're going to end up? Or is it just a complete mystery? Yeah, a complete lottery. Um, you obviously have preferences where you, where you want to go but um, yeah look it's great to be at the Oval. What about you Rav? What are you? Birmingham Phoenix? Yeah no I'm happy with that playing with my mate Mo so um, <laughs> yeah no I'm happy with that. You start looking down actually so you're now you've got a few mates in that side you've got your big mate Jason Roy, Sam Curran, Laman Charney as well so I'm assuming you're going to keep well, I don't know. We'll you see. actually don't know any of that. I suppose you haven't spoken to anyone. It's your new side. Yeah, so um, it's a strong side on paper, the two Cohen brothers as well. So, um, yeah, Jace seems uh, pretty happy as well. Uh, it would be a good, great ground to play out, arguably one of the best in the, in the world. So, uh, very happy. What about you, Rav? Have you started to think at all about how you're going to go about it? You've got, what, 20 less balls in an innings? Uh, have you started to think about how you're going to go about it? Yeah, it's tea off, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, probably where I'll be batting somewhere in the middle, I'm guessing, so um, I won't have much time, I'm guessing. It's, uh, I know it's only 3.2 of it's less, but, you know, that's a big difference. So, yeah, we'll be trying to tee off straight away. You played in the T10. What's the key to doing well in that sort of a competition and then this one? What do you think is going to be most important? Um, I think the bowlers are, are going to be a, have a big impact in this competition. I think if you've got five strong bowlers, uh, it makes a big difference. And, you know, the batters, I think, in, if I'm comparing it to T10, your top three were the most important batters. Uh, but here, you're looking at four and five batters will get a good, good go at it. Come, give us a domestic bowler, then, that you think might get picked up. Well, I don't know who the options are left. I think um, Lewis Gregory was a good pick, um, whoever got, the, got him. Um, Look, the Curran brothers already two seamers, depends on how much Sam will be there, but uh, Tom's arguably one of the best in the country, um, closing out the overs, so uh, someone else, a death bowler, to help him out would be great. Thanks, boys. Well done. Yes, well. Thanks very much for that, Rob. Good to hear from the guys there. Right, we're over to round three, 75k picks. There are five available for uh, the Rockets. Uh, Brave, Superchargers, Fire and Invincibles. Then uh, the originals move out of this round. Uh, a couple for Spirit Phoenix and then we're back round again for the Phoenix Spirit and Fire. Right, the Trent Rockets, are you ready? You're on the clock. What are you looking at here, Ness? What do they need? Cracky, they're filling up some seriously good players they there are. now. That's... Lower order hitters, you're looking at. I know lower, lower order batters don't get that much. Coulton Isle is an option there for them with the new nut. Yeah, they've gone, they've gone Coulton Isle. That's a very good signing, really good. So Southern Brave are up next. Just one pick in this round because they pre-selected Chris Jordan. This is where it gets interesting because they're, they're going to be looking at domestic players for sure. Andre Russell. David Warner overseas, they've got one available still to pick. It's amazing how many of the overseas might come lower down. They yep. might have seen some value lower down. Picks come in, just get it confirmed. Who does Anya reckon? Shut up, Khan, bit of leg spin. Mystery, mystery spin. It's going to be so important, isn't it? So, Northern Superchargers are now selecting, and they only have one in this round because they've pre selected David Willey in round three. So, their pick is in, and they've gone for Adam Lye, the homeboy, very good in T20. Yeah, he's yeah. brilliant in the uh, path lane. I think we're seeing a bit more of that, aren't we? Some homeboys, some local lads, also maybe ones that the coaches have worked with before, etc. So people know, have that relationship already, so there is a pattern forming here. So Johnny, you all lads at the Welsh Fire couldn't select in the last round, we've got two picks here. Yeah, it'll be interesting, obviously. We're going to look for a spinner at 
uh, obviously in these next couple of picks. Um, maybe someone to bat and finish the innings off an all-rounder. Well, the pick is in. We'll wait to just get it confirmed. And it's Ben Duckett. Yeah, Can it, keep. Yeah, absolutely. I mean... When, if you're not around. Obviously hits it in unconventional areas as well. Um, short, straight scoops. No spinner still. You haven't got a spinner yet. We have. Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Steve Smith. <laughs> a pick is in from the Oval Invincible. They're going for Riley Russo. Nice pick, nice pick. Jay Roy. Well done, fellas. <laughs> Not that my opinion really matters, but yeah, that's a good pick. Well, he was good value, wasn't he? Yeah, he's he was a class player. 40k, wasn't he? Uh, that is very good value. Left-handed opening yeah. bat. So we skip Manchester Originals because they've had Matt Parkinson and Saqib Mahmood pre-selected. So it's Shane Warne's London Spirit. Who does he need? On the clock. Who does he need? need? He's got. Well, he's used up his overseas, so yeah. it's all domestic now yeah. for yeah. the London Spirit. Maxwell, Mohamed Nabi, Mohamed Amir. We've got Owen Morgan, Dan Lawrence. The pick is in. We'll get that confirmed as Birmingham Phoenix go on the clock. A lot of fun to Merva, so a spinner with experience as well. Someone, if you know your own game and you're coming into a new format and trying to work it out, how important is that? Oh, yeah, he's, he, he's played a lot of cricket. I was speaking to Marcus earlier. I'm sure he'd have been on Marcus's radar, really, down at the uh, Welsh Fire. He knows his game. He's an all-round cricketer very good cricketer. I think now we're going to fall into that domestic category. Problem with the domestic, obviously, there's a lot of cold pack players in there as well. Yep. So coaches now will look cold pack, so the domestic English players will be a little bit concerned that spots go to cold pack players. Benny Howe, so domestic cr cricketer going in at 75 grand. He was tweeting at 8 o'clock this morning, looking forward to the draft. <laughs> well, he's, he's, he's hint, delighted now. Hint, hint. He's straight out the door down the yeah. pub now, I think. Well, so, back-to-back been... -back picks for Birmingham Phoenix, just to remind you about that. They've got pick 41. He's been one of their best players in the domestic cricket and the limited overs, Benny Howe. Didn't have a reserve, so he'll be delighted with that at 75k. Who are they going to go with yeah. next? Yeah. A couple of all-rounders in there. So, they want a batter, do they want a bowler? Tom, Tom Helm, Helm Wokesy, what do you reckon? In that round, Benny Howell and Tom Helm, you OK? They've got a lot of you know, change-up bowlers in that side, haven't they? Benny Howell, Pat Brown, guys like that that take pace off. So no, that was a good selection, no pace on. Tom Helm. Yeah, Tom Helm would be a yeah. pretty good selection there. The London Spirit. Only two more picks left in the round. So we've got this one from London Spirit and then Welsh Fire, their second selection. Not to think about, yeah. isn't it? I think there's a lot to think all about. All plans just Shane get... has had the hardest Especially ones, actually, now. I have to say. Mark Wood. Now, the base price oh, is 60, a... I think. Yeah. I mean, but his stats have been yeah. fantastic. Yeah, standing at the death. Pace. Good variations. That's a great pick. Johnny, come on. <laughs> what? Do you want? I got it wrong last time. <laughs> um, yeah, we've got to go spin, uh, I would like to think, um, in the next couple of bits, because, as you mentioned earlier, um, my offers are not too great. <laughs> um, but no, we'll see. Well, what spinners are out there? What spinners have we got available? Quite a few gone. Yeah. You're crossing Very out more <laughs> bits of paper than I've ever seen, and there's more detritus under your feet as you try and keep up with it. You're doing great, you should, I, I can't keep up either. I wonder how people at home are keeping up with it. Oh, Rabbi they have gone with it. The yeah. They've gone Rabbi Rampal. Very good at the death, obviously, yeah. to take the, take the new ball as well, um, with, with Stark at the top, yeah, like that. Right, well, let's confirm the grid after round three. And here we stand, Root at Trent Rockets. Rashid Khan, Darcy Short, Lewis Gregory, Hales, Coulton Isle and Gurney, Russell Warner, Dawson, Vince, Shadab Khan, Jordan. Uh, Northern Superchargers in that bracket have got Lithe and Willie. Willie was pre-selected. Uh, Duckett and Rampal will go to Welsh Fire. Oval Invincibles, uh, Russo and Tom Curran was pre-selected. Parkinson and Mamou were pre-selected for Manchester Originals. Funda Merva and Mark Wood is what London Spirit went for in that round. Benny Howell and Tom Helm for the Birmingham Phoenix. He, he's asked me for the list here. <laughs> he's having a look at the list. Why did you ask me for the list of players? Just see who else is to come, Nass, you know. <laughs> got both of them wrong. <laughs> um, 
No, it's, it's taking shape, isn't it? I mean, you can see all the way through now, like you mentioned, Birmingham have gone for pace off bowlers. You can kind of see trends as to where uh, people are going on, on different pitches as to what potentially will suit. Um, Do you think the shape of your ground at Cardiff, you know, it's, it's not a big hit straight and yeah. so you don't want two or three spinners there. Do you think that's uh, in the equation? Yeah, potentially, absolutely. But at the same time, we know that uh, sometimes pace off at, at Cardiff, people think they can then take it on straight and it can go straight up in the air. So, um, look, I'm, it's, it's going to be fascinating. But as I say, you can see it taking shape with different parts of the ground. You've actually you've still got one overseas player left yeah. to pick in that lineup. And what number are you batting? I know everyone asks you in Test match cricket what number you're batting. What number are you batting in that lineup? Do you reckon? It's normally you that's asking me that. <laughs> um, yeah, hopefully I'm opening the batting. <laughs> It'd be nice. Um, obviously, uh, 100 balls, brand new ball up front. Uh, try and get the guys off to off to a good start. And look, I mean, Tom Bantam's form in uh, over the last year or so in the T20 has been scarily good. And um, and then obviously with the experience of uh, Steve Smith through the middle um, to try and take us home uh, is, is a fantastic, fantastic combination. OK, Rob Key's got some more players to talk to and react to what's been going on in the draft so far. What you got, Keezy? Getting sledged for taking up too much room <laughs> in the sofa by Joe Root and then Bilbo's having a pop at me. Uh, but Chris Wokes, let's go through your side, Ferd. Birmingham, Birmingham Phoenix, Liam Livingston got picked early, Mo and Ali you knew about, Kane Williamson, Bapara, Howell and Helm in that round. What do you make of it all? Yeah, really good. Good mix. Um, I think, obviously, Howell, uh, Howell and Helm, probably two guys that have gone really well in domestic cricket the last couple of years. So, good to see them get, you know, a good amount of money as well. Good picks for them. But, um, yeah, I think it's, you know, shaping up nicely. A few guys there who can do a bit of everything, actually, especially if you change up bowlers. How do you think they'll go in this competition? Yeah, I think we've seen in T20 that pace off goes well. So, um, you know, we've got guys that can take pace off the ball. Um, we might need to look at someone who can bowl quick as well <laughs> um, but no yeah look we've got some guys that can certainly bowl well through the middle and also some good death bowlers there so um, yeah hopefully we've got some some areas covered already come on John I'm going to stuff you because I didn't say I was going to ask you a question but tell me who's some of the harder players to play against as a batsman in this lineup you've seen so far a lot of them had huge amounts of success um, you know you saw the, the spinners early doors being very popular but some of the other guys coming in lower down um, you know, guys like Amir coming in late on. There's some, there's some still some fa fantastic players, both domestically and overseas that you, I would expect to see the next couple of picks. So, very happy with our side though. It's uh, shaping up really nicely. Looks good. So you want a fast bowler, something like that. But how exciting is it? You're going to work with McDonald. There's some excellent coaches around as well. How exciting is it to be able to work with some of the people involved in the hundred? Yeah, definitely. It's great to, I suppose, bounce ideas off new coaches. Um, you know, when you go and play in, in, in tournaments around the world, it's good to, to pick their brains. Um, so hopefully you can do more of that. But um, yeah, I think when you go into a new dressing room with new players, you're always going to hopefully learn off them. Um, whether that be a young player like Pat Brown, who can teach me how to bowl the knuckleball. Um, <laughs> you know, or you know, anyone, or Williamson, who, you know, obviously a world-class player. So, um, you know, it's shaping up really well. And, you know, I'm really, really excited about it all, to be honest. But I'm going to give you the mic. What about keeping to Narine? Yeah, I had uh, the pleasure of doing that in uh, the T10, actually. And also, the, the, the thing about him, he can open the batting and go from ball one. There's not many players in the world that can, can do that. So, I mean, a pretty formidable opening partnership as well with him and Jason Roy, which will be probable. Throw us back to Wardy gone. And back to you, Wardy. <laughs> 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 Thank you very much, Sam. I'm over with the Southern Brave. I've got Mark Giles and head coach Mahela Jaya Wardner. Um, you've gone for three overseas fairly early on. Some have still got a couple left. Russell was a big one. Russell and Warner, your first two picks. No brainer. <laughs> well, I was quite surprised that on the turn that Warner was still available. So we had different plans. But uh, when he was available, I thought, you know, he's played a lot of franchise cricket, he's been very successful. And uh, coupled with Russell, you know, we got two big match winners and, and that's what you need, especially when you're playing a tournament which is eight games and, you know, four games, five games should get you into a qualification, so you need big match winners. Shout out to Liam Dawson as well, so spin down there with big boundaries. Exactly, I think that was one of the plans, big boundaries, um, good for spinners and uh, lucky enough to get two good spinners and Liam's 
home grown. He knows exactly what the dimensions are and where to bowl. So hopefully Shadab will learn from him. How many bits of paper have you been screwing up and throwing over your shoulder <laughs> as these picks have come out? Well, not too many, so that means it's good so far. <laughs> well done, I'll leave you there. I'm going to head down to Tom. Big Tom, if he can have a quick word with us. Where are we going? Let's have a look. Where's uh, Oval Invincible? So you got Narayan as your first pick. Do you expect him to be available when it came down there? Oh, we thought it was going to be 50-50 because he's clearly a, you know, a world-class act in short-form cricket. Um, and he fills two important roles. You know, he's, he's dangerous at the top of the order. And with Jason Roy already there, we've got uh, one destructive player to have a left-hander there as well. Um, plus the 20 balls he can offer at any stage of the innings. How do you see the overall thing? Is it, is it bowlers that you sort of load up a bit heavier with in these shorter formats? Yeah, I, I think you need to be able to defend your 100 balls. Um, but also, you've got to be able to score runs too because it, you know, there's going to be days where you're chasing something that's a little bit untidy uh, and you need some some quality and some depth and power so you know it's just trying to find that that right balance Freddie's your stats guy walks knows all about county cricket is he offered anything at the end there walks or is he just sat there I can't shut him up <laughs> 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 no it's been great I've got Vic Ramsalanki yeah. as well so you know having both uh, you know guys representing the two counties Kent and Surrey it's been valuable for me because Obviously, I've been involved in county cricket, but it was some time yep. ago. So I'm very familiar with the, the whole setup and structure of county cricket. But you know, the current players, I see a few of them around the circuit. Uh, the, you know, when they play in the the big bashes or the IPLs or the PSLs or whatever it might be, the Caribbean Premier League, we've had yep. a few recently. Um, so yeah, that's an advantage for me because I see them playing live. But you know, they're they're valuable resources. Happy so far? Very. Thank you. Good man. Ish. It's all starting to take shape. A thank you to Johnny and Jason for joining us. Hope you've been able to digest it all at home. Time for a break at the end of round three. An opportunity for the coaching staff to take stock, but don't go too far because it's also a chance for us to relive what was an unforgettable unforget summer. They're going to push. Are we in for a super over? Out! I'm sure he's out! We're going to a super over! Cut away, what an innings, what a player. Take a bow, Ben Stokes.
Welcome back to The 100 Draft. A reminder that you can get all the latest news and views on what's happened tonight at skysports.com forward slash The 100. So we have had three rounds in the draft so far. Still plenty of names to go through. Still plenty of players to be delighted and some to be saddened. We'll come back to the draft. It's on pause as the coaches have a bit of a break. Gives us time to look back on what has been a quite unbelievable summer. at the other end. Wow. Have a look at this. Drag to the boundary. 100 for Ben Stokes. Punch down the ground. Four. One for tie. Two to win. Could be a run out. Oh, he's fumbled. Lion has fumbled. Cut away. What an innings. What a player. Take about Ben Stokes. We've got the World Cup here. We'll come on to that in a minute. How did you do that, Eddie? I don't know. Just get my the ball. You were videoing something there. What were you videoing? I was just taking a picture of Johnny, just <laughs> <laughs> making sure he didn't pick any of the keepers. <laughs> were your memories of that day, though, at Headingley? Yeah, great. Um, I don't, not just you know those two particular days, but I think just the whole summer has been awesome. It's going to be something that we all as players can look back on with nothing but happy memories and I think fans and you know people all around the country will be able to do the same thing. It's just been the best summer to be a part of. And tiring too. Well, come on, there must have been a point after you'd <coughs> finished the Ashes and you won the World Cup and you did sit home and you just thought, <sighs> it's over. It was actually when we took the last wicket. Oh, was yes. it? <laughs> Summer's done. Yeah, it was, it was a really long summer. It felt like sort of two and one. Um, Tiring, yes, um, and last four or five weeks have been, you know, just shutting it down and being at home and, and feet up and, you know, <laughs> I haven't actually felt the, the need or urge to pick up a bat or a ball. Um, did my first training session a couple of days ago, so, um, yeah, the, the break has been needed, um, but, you know, I'm ready to get going again over the long winter. Uh, Owen, that beautiful trophy, it's the real one, I take it. Yeah. It is, because yeah, you've yeah. been traipsing that around the place and taking it to your cricket club and other kids. <laughs> I mean, has that win inspired some of the kids that you've been seeing? Certainly, in my experience, it has. Uh, we've had many trips around schools, hospitals, and our local cricket clubs where young kids have come and are so excited and ecstatic about what happened during the summer. And to be able to, I suppose, put smiles on their faces or maybe inspire them to pick up a ball or a bat, is such a satisfying feeling and it needs to happen because otherwise it's a little bit pointless winning a World Cup if nobody knows about it yeah. and nobody wants to play cricket. But yeah. thankfully, all the indications are quite strong, participation levels are going up, which is fantastic. And all the feedback from the local coaches at our cricket club is that since the World Cup final, participation has been, like the demand has been has extraordinary. It? Yeah. When you look back on that World Cup, can you compartmentalise it now or do you still go, wow? No, How did that happen? Does that, does that throw from Jason Roy to Joss still go very, very slowly? Yes, it does. <laughs> it does. And then reliving the, that moment that is very vivid in my mind is something that won't actually sink in for a very long time. And I, I don't really want it to. It's, it's, yeah. I don't want it to get carried away. I want to enjoy it. There's a fantastic feeling around cricket at the moment. And, and we're loving it. I think we, we should take advantage of it and, and ride the wave for as long as we can. That brilliant shot there of Owen lifting the World Cup when it was all yipping and yarring, but there was a, a few blips throughout the way. It wasn't straightforward just to get to that trophy lift. How did the team deal with that and move forward again? I think because it was a four-year process and we built, you know, for, for the seven weeks in England and we managed to, to overcome a lot of difficult situations, 
and we were faced with a couple in that World Cup. Mm. And I don't think we would have been able to do it as well if we hadn't have had a few bumpy rides. Um, and because we had to do it so quickly in the World Cup, I think showed how much we'd grown as individuals and as a team. And I think getting to the tough points like we did, where we sort of knew we had to win if we wanted to get any further, made it even that more special. That you know we were playing non-knockout cricket even before the semi-final or, or, or getting through the group stages. How important were tournaments like this? Obviously, other franchise tournaments, IPL, Big Bash, etc., for your players. A for the pressure situation, but also their skills. I think it's huge, absolutely huge, and I think it, it's it's part of our development as a team as well. Uh, we're very fortunate; we've a lot of talented guys, so we want to get the most out of that talent by giving them opportunities to go and play in other tournaments around the world. And we've seen the likes of Ben and Joss go to the IPL and be in huge demand by every team that you know wants to win the tournament. And they're not just in huge demand; they're actually going there and be performing. Uh, as one of the best in the tournament and that is a huge confidence booster not only for the change room but for those guys who, who are playing. We don't have to wait for an international series to come up against some of the best players and beat them and perform well against them. Um, there's that fine example that uh, you guys always give it every time you tour Australia and it was a bad experience, there are scars. Whereas guys are coming back from these tournaments uh, with really positive thoughts and ideas about the game. You said quite controversially a few years ago when we weren't playing white ball cricket that well, that you felt that our domestic cricket wasn't really setting up your players for white ball international cricket. Do you think the quality and the coaches and the names on the list that you're seeing here will set them up? Oh, massively. The opportunity that the 100 brings is extraordinary. You see the, the names of the coaches in, in the room here today making the selections, the guys who have been selected, all of the, the, the players who were... Uh, have put in applications. They are world-class players. This is going to be one of the biggest and best tournaments in the world. And I think the big opportunity for us is to give it to you know a young Liam Livingston who hasn't played a lot of international cricket yet, who will be a, uh, a well-known name by the end of next year. You know, he'll come out and, and play really well. Um, so you'll have guys becoming uh, better performers in high-pressure situations uh, simply by playing against some of the best in the world. How did you find it then when you were out? in the IPL, all eyes were on you, you were different coaches, experienced coaches, world-class players. I mean, I'm looking, to carry on from what Owen was saying there, Ben Duckett at the Welsh Fire is going to be watching Steve Smith, close hand, bat, prepare, lead his life as well. Mm -hmm. How much does that rub off when you are in these competitions and help you? Yeah, uh, IPL and, and, and everything like that, you know, obviously it's in a great tournament to be a part of, and, but it also gets you used to big games you become accustomed to it because you're playing in front of 20,000 people um, and we're going to get the, the, the players here are going to be um, exposed to that uh, which hasn't happened in England before domestic level yeah. so this is creating an environment so close to international cricket because you're playing against the best players in the world the best players in, in England are all coming together and as Morg said before you know Liam Livingston, Ben Ducker, these guys who haven't played as much international cricket when they eventually do because they are very very good players they, they've got this experience here and playing in the hundred to look back on and and take that big game exposure in with them because we're going to be you know as i say you're going to be exposed to the best players in the world you're going to be um you know try to go out and get the best players if you're a bowler try and score runs against the best bowlers in the world if you're a batter so you can see everything how it's shaping shaping here and it's going to be awesome i think it's going to be a real big thing. Which was your better day, Headingley or Lord's World Cup? That's a terrible question. Isn't it? Uh, no. I've been you don't have to answer that. One of those days. No, no. Again. No. I can't. I can't see it. <laughs> well, anyway, what are, you, what are you looking down at the Northern Superchargers yeah. then? So you're Aaron Finch and Majeeb. Chris Lynn, Rash was already selected. Mm -hmm. Adam Lythe and David Willey was already selected. How are you looking? I think really, really good. We've got, we've got Aaron Finch here who's proven around the world that he is one of the well, yeah, he is right at the top of, of the best T20 batters in the world. Um, opening batter, so he's going to take as many balls as he possibly can. And then you've got Majib, who's an absolute genius with the ball, um, along with Rash. And then, as you say, we, we got Dave there as well, you know, left arm, swings a new ball, which I think is going to be crucial. Um, what do you need? 
I think the only thing that we need to, we need a bit of pace. So, come on, Buff. <laughs> he's he's <laughs> yakking some, away with his some of those quick mate, that yeah. sort of stuff. How are you yeah. looking, the London Spirit? I think are you going to captain them? Do you know? I am, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. It's an absolute privilege, isn't yeah. it? I'm delighted working with Warney the last couple of weeks and preparing for this has been absolutely outstanding. He's an amazing cricket brain and trying to learn from him and continue to do it over the next couple of years will be awesome. But I think we're shaped up really well. We're surprised that we Maxwell hadn't already gone, but a seventh pick. Um, so it's fantastic uh, up the top of the order. We've uh, sort of pace covered with the complete opposite to, to Stokesy. We've got Amir and Mark Wood, which is great. We've got two spinners already, so we've a lot of areas covered. I think the next pick at 55 and then 71 will almost iron out yeah. most of our options for the team. How do you think it would change tactically? I mean, it's only 20 balls left, which doesn't sound a lot, but it probably is. And all equally, in terms of the bowlers being able to bowl perhaps the first 15 or the first 20, gives you something different to think about as a captain. Definitely does. Um, and I think it's, it's going to be so exciting and so chaotic that you know, you'll need to be able to think clearly and you'll need to have guys who perform under pressure in certain moments of the game. I think probably strategically the most significant thing that you mentioned was the 10 balls. Yeah. Being able to you know, start to finish a game with 10 balls, your best bowler, which is extraordinary, um, which is great, huge innovation. I think, lo love the fact that we're at the front of it as well. You've got a big winter coming up. There's been a bit of talk. We won the World Cup, prioritising white ball cricket. England can fight the front on all forms, can't they? They can still keep what you and Owen and all of those guys have done in white ball cricket in the World T20 and push the test side forward. Oh, 100%, not? 100%. And, you know, it's, we've got a winter here. I mean, the test championship obviously now adds a lot more excitement to um, to test matches because it's not just series by series now that they all go into something to you know for a trophy at the end of the two years so um, in the test team we're, we're very excited about what we've got ahead of us and um, we know what we need to get better at we know where we need to improve but we know that we've got everything available to us yeah. to be as successful as we possibly can gentlemen it's been a fantastic summer it was a privilege real privilege to watch your many many congratulations we'll see you play throughout the winter at some stage that's for sure we're going to be heading back to the draft there's still a lot of things to be sorted out we've had three rounds we've got four five six and seven still to go everyone has an opinion from both teams the coaches will be back we'll have round four next
We're about to head into round four, and it's a hive of activity over at London Spirit. Oh, Morgan is going to rejoin us on the sofa with Ben Stokes, but they're actually both with their sides. Owen with London Spirit, Ben with the Northern Superchargers, trying to offer a bit of advice to Darren Lehman and uh, Shane Warne. So skysports.com forward slash the hundred if you want to keep up with all that's been going on today. This is where we have got to. We are into round four. So just one pick each for London Spirit because they've pre-selected Dan Lawrence and Pat Brown is at Birmingham Phoenix. So are you ready, Flem? Trent Rockets, you're on the clock for round four. Right, the first three teams have not got a keeper. Well, this side need a keeper. They definitely. need a keeper. They need a domestic keeper, I, I reckon. Who have we got? Ben Cox. Oh, still no keeper. Tom Allsop. Pixie. Ricky Vessels. Oh, Stephen Mullaney. Stephen Mullaney. Good All experience. Yep. Good experience. Again, experienced players that come into a new competition and try and work it out. Southern Brave. Mahela Jai Warden and Mark Nicholas and Giles Wine. <laughs> they seem happy enough. Get on with it. Those <laughs> <laughs> the ground world as Stephen Mullaney, but another keeper needed here. Who have they got overseas? I wonder if they've got, they've they can't have done their overseas. Ooh, picks in. Um, shit. Get it confirmed. Pace. Ooh, two mile mills. Two mile mills. I wonder if uh, Northern Superchargers were looking at that. Ben Stokes saying that he wanted a bit of pace. Yeah, that's true. Are they just taking your man, Stokesy? By the way, Stokes, you're supposed to be over here helping us, not them, but never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Stay there. <laughs> what has the cricket brain of Ben Stokes come up with then for this selection? Finch, Majib, Chris Lynn, Rash was already selected, Adam Lythe and David Willey. The pick is in, we need to get it confirmed. Richard Gleeson. Rash, good. Same He's happy. The yep. I'd be very surprised if they put their thumbs down. In that the... would be very, <laughs> be very funny, though, wouldn't it? It'd be very funny, though. Someone should do that. <laughs> they would if you'd been selected. <laughs> yeah. right, Welsh I'm, fire I'm on the I'm going to say it again with the Welsh fire. They need some spin here. But don't, do they need heaps, though, given the dimensions of the ground? No, they need one. What, Imad Wazim Maybe. might be a good option. Yeah, that's a great option. Yeah, Mad was in. That's a good that's a show. That's a great option. Hasn't he got some... Wasn't he born oh, yeah, in... Near Cardiff. Is, yeah. I'm pretty sure near Cardiff. Yeah. Yeah. Close enough. <laughs> Local lad. 50,000 is his base price. Santner. Well, the pick is in. Simon Harmer. Yeah. yeah. It's an interesting one, Simon that. Harmer. Essex. He bowled really well in finals there. You know, in the mid start of the season for Essex, he wasn't a great T20 bowler. As that se season progressed, he got a lot better. That's a good pick. Oval Invincibles are on the clock. They've gone for Reese Topley, who's yeah. back playing cricket after serious back trouble, had an option down at Sussex. <laughs> Another left arm yeah. for Sam to work with. And good, good at the death. Yeah, very good at the death. Just ticking boxes, aren't you? Left armers, mystery spin, hitters up front, death bowlers. All these coaches will just have those boxes that they need ticking. No, look just at that. Final yeah. bits of the jigsaw they'll be thinking of. Obviously, wicket keepers, lower order batsmen in the middle there that can finish games for them. So these are the harder selections, I'd say. What if someone will go for an out-and-out -out proper gloveman as a keeper, as opposed to... Someone like a... Daniel Christian yeah. in for the Manchester Originals. Played a lot of cricket over here in England. Knots and uh, an all-rounder can smash it. Option as a captain. Two, you've got to keep your yeah. eye on captain and keepers. Yeah, very useful with the ball. Opener, London Spirit, do they have an opener in there at all? Who would open in that line-up? We well, really, could open so. with Maxwell if you wanted to. Yeah. It's a very short form. Yeah. So I'd say they need an opening bat, but you never know. They're taking it so seriously. <laughs> Can you relax a bit over there? <laughs> Dimmy, what have you got for us? Dimmy Mascarenas. Advisor to Shane Warne. Picks in. They're going for Joe Denley. Yeah. Again, slightly interesting in terms of availability. Yeah. You just don't know at this stage, come yeah. July, is he going to be in that England side? He's a very good white ball player. Shaheen Afridi has gone to Birmingham Phoenix yeah, very quickly. Yeah. So Pat Brown and Dan Lawrence have been pre-selected by Birmingham and London 
spirit respectively, so it's Manchester Originals on the clock. That selection happened quite quickly. Shaheen Afridi, a bit of piss. Yeah, good left arm option, good at the top, good at the death. We've got Tom Helm as well, tall bowler. What are they looking for here, Manchester of, uh, Originals? Medium paces, I'm Originals. Yeah, I've got, like, uh, got a couple of good, uh, high quality spin they've options. They've got spin, young Shaki Mahmood, the all rounder Dan Christian. Maybe a batsman, but they've gone for Wayne Madsen. Very good domestic player. Yeah. I'm sure he's been outstanding in T20 Johnny Bairstow said to me just when he walked off, actually, he said that'd be a very good signing. So, were you any help over there, you two? Or you just <laughs> well, messing he's about? Fun. That's that's, really, that's hurt. That. Did you did you want Tim Well, Well, Madsen. You wanted Madsen. Picks in for Oval Invincibles. They've gone for Hardisville Hune. Now he is a Colpat, but goes in as a domestic <laughs> player. I'm just looking at the bowlers that the Invincibles have got. Two mystery spin. Tom Curran, Sam Curran, Reese Topley, Hardisville, Hume. What was the chat? Over, what was the chat over there, Morgs? Yeah, good chat. We need we needed a, an opening batsman, uh, and you're getting into good value domestic players. And we couldn't believe Joel's not being picked up. I know he's in the test team at the moment, but. There's a, a strong chance he'd be available for at least four games. There's a, there's a great replacement system in place where we can replace Joe if, if he's away with the test team. Offers a little leg spin as well, option with the new ball. So, fantastic. Case Ahmed has gone to Welsh Fire as Northern Superchargers are on the clock. 19-year-old, played for St Lucia Stars and Hobart Hurricanes. He's a leggy, so they have got some spin down there for Welsh Fire. Keep and they've gone for a keeper. Yep. Good gloveman too, can stand up. Oh, best I just think I've seen. Really? Yeah. Oh, the lads won't be happy downstairs, will they? Best I've seen. <laughs> oh, but look and whack it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you do, you've got someone like Majeev as well. Ross Whiteley goes to the Southern Brave. Someone this is, else? This yep. is where your, your local domestic players, you know, and out there tuning in, they're going, this is, <laughs> we are absolutely perfect in this sort of area. Trent Rockets, local boy, Matthew Carter. Yeah. Spinner bowls in the power play. Ooh. Good option for them. That's so. the end of that round then. So let's confirm it when we got the grid all done and dusted. After four rounds, this is how we are looking. So you're happy as it stands at the moment? Oh. Yeah, very happy. I think uh, we've got all bases covered at the moment. Two spin options, two quicks. Um, we have our opening partnership sorted. Maxwell and Denley It's quite explosive um, partnership. So we're happy at the moment. There's still like some great players out there that can be selected at this price and, and below um, 50,000. So it's, yeah, there's still work to be done. With someone like Joe, are you, is there a discussion that you might be in the test side and therefore availability limited? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we spoke about it at length um, literally four or five minutes ago. And no, you weren't. You're having a laugh. <laughs> <laughs> the quality of player that Joe is, having him for that period of time, is as good as having a gun overseas international player. So. Yeah, it's a little bit of a gamble that his availability might be short, but we can replace him. I know you take the mick out of keepers and the best keeper, you said. <laughs> it is very important in this format that you have an exceptional <clears throat> glove man because it's so quick, spinners, mystery spinners, being able to pick them, it is absolutely vital. You look at what Dhoni's done at Chennai, mm. standing up to those stumps. The shorter the form of the game, the keeper becomes vital. I think the shorter the form is, the, the more important, you know, saving one or two runs mm. is. Yeah. And, you know, when you've got mystery spin like yeah. Majib, um, you need someone who, who is up to that standard. Yeah. And I think for us, Ben Folks is, is... And I think if he can save us one to two runs, even three, four runs throughout the whole tournament, then I think that will, you know, add a lot of chance to us winning because I don't keep myself, but I stand at slip to leg spinners and sometimes I don't know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> right, Rob Keys in the cafe with some more player reaction. Yeah, there's a few of us here now. Adil Rashid, Sam Curran, Moen Ali, Ravi's over there, Tom Banton as well. Start with you, Dilly. Uh, where are we? Northern Superchargers, Gleeson and Folks. Very happy. Yeah, Gleeson looks <laughs> very happy. Good pace, so it's a good pick, and Folks is a quality uh, wicketkeeper. So, um, for me, I'm very, very happy. How important is that, a keeper, for you and your spin bowling? No, massively. You know, you, you, you want the keeper to know, you know what you're bowling. Also, him giving you advice to know, you know what the batsman's doing. So, very happy with that. 
Sam Oval Invincibles, Topley and Villian. So another left armour and a bit of pace from Villian. Yeah, always have to go to a bit of pace at the Oval, big ground into the wicket. Obviously, they've done pretty well in the blast this year as well. So two great signings and hopefully we can add a couple of batters in there and um, shape it up nicely. Is that what you want next, a few batsmen? Yeah, I reckon a few, a few of the local batters will be nice that know the oval. Maybe Ollie Pope, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mo, you've gone for well. You had Shaheen Afridi and Pat, not Shaheed Afridi, Shaheen Afridi, <laughs> trying to stuff me there, Rashid. And uh, Pat Brown, you're already picked. So, Shaheen Afridi. Yeah, really pleased with him. Obviously, pace, left arm. Um, got a bit of experience now playing around the world, and he's, he's a quality bowler, so I think he, uh, edge batsman as well would be fantastic. Is it quite interesting looking at all the other teams and who they're picking as well? Yeah, I think it is. There's obviously opinions on other people's teams, which you got to <laughs> you can say behind the people's backs, but I won't say that one here. So um, now the teams are pretty strong. Some of the names that have been picked up is pretty cool, and um, yeah, I'm sure it's going to be a great tournament with some amazing players. I suppose now becomes a time for some of the domestic players where you're starting to pick a few gems. Yeah, of course. Uh, I think we're going to be looking at a couple of batters, guys who can win your games um, and there are still a few out there. All right, well, best of luck for the rest of the rounds. Back to you, Isha. Yeah, I've got Gary Kirsten alongside me We're with the Welsh fire. Marcus just got it behind him. Uh, in stern talks with Mark Wallace, uh, the informant for the Welsh fire. Are you happy with your pick so far? I think we are. Yeah, we've covered some of the bases uh, we need to cover. There's a bit more work to do, but um, yeah, I think we're happy with where we wanted to go with the team. Interesting strategy from you. You went Stark and Smith first, two very, very good picks, but you waited a while for that last overseas. We did because we felt uh, there were some other uh, players that we needed to get um, in, in those price brackets and we, we kind of knew that most of the other teams had their, their spinners covered. So we took a bit of a punt, went a bit deeper on and uh, we're glad we got him. You waited a while for, for your spinners as well, Marcus. I'm bringing you in. 27 years at Somerset. You've got good knowledge of the, the county game. Do you want a few, some, a few more Somerset players in there? Well, it's good to see uh, Tom Abel and Lewis Gregory both gone at a good price and Rulof van der Merwe as well. So uh, it's, it's looking good. So uh, we might have to find a few players at Somerset, that's for sure. Who else do you think you need? Oh, I don't know. We're trying to work that out at the moment. It's not, almost not enough time just to try and get the balance right. But... Uh, um, you know, we've got so much information here, you're trying to pick out what you think is the best um, and the best route to go. Got to be very careful, otherwise you'll bust the clock. Yeah, I, I don't think we're close yet. <laughs> I don't think anyone's getting too close yet, so we'll see how it pans out. Very much looking forward to this next few rounds. Back to you, Wardy. Yeah, there'll be a lot still to go on. Owen, Ben, thanks very much for your company. Round five will be coming up next, and each is going to take a closer look at the women's hundred.
Welcome back to The 100 Draft. You can get all the latest news and views on what happens tonight at skysports.com slash The 100. This is how things stand at the moment. Three more rounds to go. This is where it gets really interesting. So many domestic players still to choose from. And uh, the coaches uh, and their support staff have been thinking uh, long and hard about who to go for next. It's also a warm welcome to three members of the Women's 100. Ian Ward and Nassif Zane have popped off for a break. I've got Catherine Brunt alongside me, Kate Cross and Lydia Greenway, who will be coaching the Oval Invincibles. Uh, Kate Cross with the Manchester Originals and Catherine with the Trent Rockets. The reason they're here is because we've got some breaking news for you for the Women's 100. Eight new marquee signings. There are six available in total, three overseas and three England contracted. Susie Bates has gone to the Southern Brave. She continues at Southampton. Tammy Beaumont to the London Spirit. Sophie Devine, hard-hitting all-rounder to the Birmingham Phoenix. At the Northern Superchargers, we've got Elisa Healy, so she's going to be separated from her husband, Meg Lanning, <laughs> to the Welsh Fire. Liz L. Lee is up uh, with you, Kate, at the Manchester Original. Sophie Molyneux will be joining you, Catherine, at the Trent Rockets. Uh, all-rounder from Australia and Dane van Nierkirk has been signed to the Oval Invincibles leg spinner and uh, hard-hitting batter. We'll get the thoughts uh, from you girls in just a moment. But over to the men's draft business. We're over to round five. Trent Rockets, you are on the clock. So while well, these guys are continuing uh, with their picks, we're going to carry on with uh, the, the women's chat. Firstly... Lydia, your thoughts on those signings? Yeah, obviously, I think it's, it's in a really exciting, it's going to be a really exciting competition. And I think, you know, around the world at the moment, there's some absolute world-class players up for grabs. And I think from a women's point of view, those names there that we've just seen on the screen are probably the best. Um, and so I think from a player's point of view, it's a really exciting opportunity to play with different players. Um, but certainly from a coaching point of view, that's the thing that I'm most excited about is to actually work with, with world-class players across different countries as well. And, and that's why I'm so excited to be involved. And what about the domestic game for the women being on the same platform as the men? How significant is that, Kate? Yeah, it's huge for us. It's, um, it's something that we've probably been, been crying out for for a long time now. Um, and I think there was an announcement a couple of weeks ago saying that the ECB are going to invest 20 million definitely in the next two years in the, in the women's game, which is it's just a phenomenal amount of money. And it's something that, um, you know, we need. We need that kind of platform. We need a competition like this where we're, um, we're treated similarly, similarly to the men. Um, but yeah, like Lid said, it's just going to be a really exciting time for us. Good to hear from you a little bit earlier talking about the, the women's 100. Firstly, congratulations on your engagement. You must be delighted that you're going to the Trent Rockets with Natalie Zimmer. I know, uh, I misplaced it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm terrible. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's brilliant. Um, it was definitely part of the reason why I went to the Trent Rockets in the, in the first place. Um, you always want to make sure you're playing with good people and definitely... Playing with Nat was um, right up there in the, um, the things that I wanted to do, so I'm, I'm very happy with that. And what about the big name signing, signings that have just come up now, the marquee mm. signings for, for the women's hundred? Excited to be playing with and against all these players? Yeah, it's brilliant, isn't it? And I think that's one of the best things about it is that you get to play with such brilliant cricketers and ones that you've, you admire, look up to throughout your career and, and get to share the stage with different people every time, like I'm playing with the Perth coaches, things like that. You get to play with different players around the world and... Um, Sophie Molyneux is part of our team and I think it's a bit left field for, for certainly the first picks that have come out just now but I, I still think it's a great pick and you know all-rounders especially ones like her will, will do really well in this competition. So many massive names in the women's hundred and we can hear from one of them now. Hey everyone, I uh, just wanted to say how excited I am to have signed, have been signed by the Walsh Fire. Uh, the 100 competition is really exciting and it's certainly the next step for women's sport. It's a really exciting time to be part of the women's game and I'm really looking forward to being a part of it. I know you guys are in the middle of the men's draft at the moment, so I hope that's all going well and I'm looking forward to seeing you next year. Meg Lanning, the Australian captain, number two T20 batter in the world in terms of ICC ranking. She absolutely blitzed it last summer when she came here uh, to play against England in the Ashes. Not to remind you guys again, but Kate, you played with her over in Australia. How good is she? Yeah, she's, um, she's a different class. And uh, I was lucky enough, I got to play at the Scorchers as well, and she captained me. And um, it's certainly nice having her on your team. 
Um, similarly, we've signed Lizelle and uh, the, the originals this year, so you know she's taken us apart so many times in the KSL. So I was make, <laughs> made sure. Not that nice we, to be on the same team. As no, you. not when my final figures for the KSL I was going <laughs> at 23s, I think, in that final game. So yeah, it was um, yeah it was a bit destru destructive, but um, I think it just goes to show. I think Healy, Lanning, Lizelle, Lee are the three top T20 players in the world. I, well, we're just watching. Lanning take us apart here, which is nice. <laughs> um, don't need reminding of that day. Um, but no, she is. She's a different class of player, and um, to have someone like her and her calibre come and want to play in the hundred, it just goes to show, you know, how desirable this tournament is for the girls. How do you think she's going to find it over in Wales? Um, she'll find it different. <laughs> <laughs> no, she'll have she'll have a great time. So they'll have a good team, and obviously she's got some familiarity with the with the coach there. So I'm sure she'll be happy. We've got Susie Bates uh, as well, who's just signed up. For the Women's 100, she will be going to the Southern Brave alongside Anya Shrobsol and uh, Danny Wyatt, number one T20 batter in the world. She's all class, isn't she, Lydia? Yeah, she's brilliant. I was lucky enough to, to play with her in the first year of, of the Kia Super League. And, you know, it's not just her batting, it's what she brings all round, you know, her bowling and also from a tactical point of view, having captain New Zealand for a number of years, she's just such a, a valuable player to, to any tournament. And actually, I think that's one of the nice things with the women's competition is the players for the first time have got a chance um, or an opportunity to play where they want to play. Traditionally, mm -hmm. the England girls have sort of been allocated to teams. But this time, you know, I can approach any of these and they can say yes <laughs> or no, and it's completely up to them. And, you know, I'm sure for, for these guys, it's a, a really nice thing and to have. Local team for you now, isn't it? The Trent Rockets. <laughs> it is. Even um, down from Yorkshire to, to Loughborough. I know, I am a Yorkshire lass and I'll play my 50 over cricket there forever. But um, it was nice to just have, you know, this is a fresh tournament. It's something completely different. So and it, I didn't base it necessarily on that because it isn't, I'm not playing for Yorkshire. It would be Leeds and different, you know, areas around there. So it's, it wasn't necessarily a, a loyalty thing at the time. That's what I tell myself anyway. But, um, <laughs> I was very close to going to Lydia, actually. Lydia's, the coach is really important for me, having a really good relationship with the coach and being in around Nottingham, where I live at, for the last 10 years, is actually just really handy and um, was, was a good reason why I picked that one as well. Save money, <laughs> <laughs> Save money on the pedal. That, that's going to the ECB, isn't it, that bill? Uh, what about the, the coaching then? Because five of uh, the named coaches are female coaches and four of those uh, from England, including yourself. Are you excited about the opportunity? Because I suppose this is your sort of first high profile signing, isn't it, as a coach? Yeah, it is. I've, you know, I've done a lot at the grassroots level and I spent the last couple of years working with the Kent women's team. That's who I played for for, for most of well, all of my career. Um, so I sort of had a bit of, you know, a, a sniff really at, at that coaching role and it was something I really enjoyed. But I think the thing that really enticed me into this competition is working with the people that we, you know, we're going to have the players. Um, you know, we get to have three of the world's best players from around the world coming to play for us and obviously the England girls and some really exciting exciting domestic players so I think from that point of view as well to have other women involved it's um, you know it's a really exciting time for us as coaches as, as well as the players. But how good is it also to, to try and pick the brains of someone like a Tom Moody I noticed you were having a chat to him in the cafe before, <laughs> yeah, I was, before the start it's, um, yeah, obviously brilliant. I think I met Tom um, out in the Women's T20 World Cup a couple of years ago and had a really interesting chat with him. And, you know, we were up in the cafe earlier and talking about, you know, how different will the 100 be? Um, and the thing I got out of it is that it's still cricket. You know, you still have to bat, bowl and field well. And I'm sure as we go, there'll be little elements and, and tactical things that we'll have to, to pick up on quite quickly. But ultimately, it is still the game of cricket. And, you know, we're just, I think even more so, it's going to be even more exciting to watch because it is a, a shorter format. Is, is that something you've talked about quite a lot as, as players, the, the, the tactics of the game so early when it's next summer? We actually played a warm-up game it's probably about 18 months ago now um, and generally the feel was it just felt like another game of 2020 <laughs> cricket. Yeah, it didn't feel that much different as a player, I, you know, obviously watching it might be a little bit different. I do remember we were three for three in the first over, though, which <laughs> didn't, and you cleaned everyone up, Not so that didn't help. She'll be saying that when she's bowling ten balls in a row. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was going to say that. that. That's the difference, isn't it? You get to yeah. have a break after five balls. <laughs> that's you know, beauty. If, you, if, you've got, if you've got a nice wicket and uh, the ball is new, brand new, then that's where the tactics will come in, I think. If, you can, if, you've, got, if you've selected yourself an a out-and-out 
um, new ball bowler and you can get them to swing the ball you know, from the very first over, why not make that a 10 ball over and make life as m difficult as you can for that opening pair. So I think that kind of tactic will come into it, definitely. Both of you already kind of talked about how your, your teams are, are setting up. What about for, for the Oval team? Have you got an idea, a clear idea of the way you want to be heading? Yeah, yeah, we're, we're pretty close. We've got um, the majority of our, our squad in place and um, it, sort of the priority for me really was getting that backbone in place. So, you know, getting your top order strong, then, um, you know, your spin and a bit of pace and then obviously some really exciting domestic players as well. So, yeah, we're, we're pretty close to, to confirming our squad. Um, obviously, I can't really say too much about who, who's in place. But, um, yeah, I mean, the whole process has been uh, an exciting one. You know, you're chatting to so many different players and you know often your answer that you get from players can can suddenly shift actually the route <laughs> that you then go go to so um yeah it's been it's been a learning curve that's for sure and what about for you you obviously captain in the ksl <laughs> is that something you like to do again um yeah i think so um i mean we generally our summer this year was quite a tough one you know going from the ashes to then going to that ksl it was certainly a learning curve <laughs> Um, stop laughing. <laughs> um, but it's tough in the short of format as a bowler, isn't it? Yeah, well, just generally, I found the whole thing tough. It was quite new. For, well, it was brand new for me. But um, I do think that I'll learn, I'll probably learn most from that summer because when everything's peachy and everyone's sailing through and winning games, you don't really tend to do much learning. But I think when, you, when you're down at the bottom of the table and you're scrapping for, for wins, then, you know, you do actually learn, you learn most about your players as well and what mm. they can, you know, who you can turn to in those situations. So um, we've obviously I've got Sophie Eccleston as well, which I've signed. You know, she's she's the best left arm spinner in the world at the minute, and well, she is in my opinion anyway. And whether stats, I'm not sure, but um, yeah, it's great to have the likes of her. You know, developing her game still, and she's only 20 years old. Yeah. Everyone forgets that. You know how much pressure we put on her in in an English shirt and in a or what was a Lancashire shirt. But um, yeah, I think it's it's just going to be such an exciting time for the women's game. Who would you love to see in your team at the Trent Rockets? Um, who, who, okay, who would you love to see and who would you like to, to play with that you've never played with before? Um, I think that one of the biggest rivalries I've ever had on the cricket pitch in the 10 years would be Elise Perry. Um, I think it would, be, it would be a strange one, but it would be an interesting one I would, I would like to experience um, just because it's so, just because of that, that rivalry for so long. So, yeah, that would be interesting. Ladies, thank you very much for your time. Lydia, I'm enjoying the, the Christmas socks. <laughs> you up the, the couch. I know, it's nice and warm. The, the round five picks are in and Ian Ward has been across it. Been trying to keep across it. Fascinating chat. Thanks very much, Isha. We're going to try and show you the grid. We'll show you on the big screen. Here we go. Right, so uh, round five is in. Luke Wood uh, has gone to the Trent Rockets, a local lad, and Tom Moores as the keeper. So two local lads for Trent Rockets. I'm going to go straight across, actually, if I can, to Flem. Local boys, way to go. They know the dressing room, they know the environment you want to create, and they know all about the conditions. Oh, there's, there's a theory around that it helps with the sort of cohesion early. So when you have four or five days to get together and create a team, the more players that have a, a relationship, um, you can get started a bit quicker. So I, I think that's sort of a philosophy going around. And, and also you've, you've got some attachment to the ground and and friends and family around, so that, that's a bit of logic there. OK, Flem, thanks very much. Warney's having a yarn over here. Who did you go for in that? Leggy, Mason, Crane, and who was your other one? Kyle Abbott. Yeah, obviously they're good performers with the white ball. They um, do pretty well. Mason Crane's a good wicket-taker in this form of the game. Abbott does well, can bowl the hole. Um, so I think we've got a good variety in our attack. Bit of spin in there. Of Plenty spin. of spin, yeah. We've got a couple of off-spinners, a left-arm spinner, wrist spinner. Um, so, yeah, we're going OK. How much have you been scratching your head while all this has been coming on? <laughs> and other picks affecting yeah, the way you're doing things? Yeah, it's been cool, hasn't it? Dan's messed us out of sight, actually, a couple of times. <laughs> so, so has Cato with the pick before us both times. So it's a bit of chaos. But um, oh, it's been great fun. I think most of the sides all look really strong. Um, a lot of variety in the attack, some good batting, some good power batting, some experience. So, yeah, look, we're really happy with our side so far. Considering the position we're in with the picks we had, I think we've done OK. Four to go. Thanks, mate. Right, I'm going to come here and... Go to Simon Kalic. First time we've spoken to you. How are you shaping up? Yeah, we're happy. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of good players in the draft. So, um, you know, when you look at the squads up there, there's a lot of talent, uh, a lot of very good squads. So we're happy with the players we've got so far and a lot of experience, but also some nice, useful players in there as well that uh, will be keen to make their mark. 
Let's go to the, the top there. Imran Tahir and Vias. What's the theory there? Well, obviously, Imran Tahir is one of the best leg spinners in the world. His record speaks for itself, so we wanted experience there. Um, we obviously play on a big ground at, at Old Trafford, so he'll certainly enjoy bowling there. And Dane Vilas has done a fantastic job as uh, Lancashire captain, and he's obviously highly experienced um, and has had a very good season this year, so we wanted you know, a lot of experience at the top. How much are you looking for leaders, then, in the dressing room when you come in a new competition like this? Well, obviously, you know, that's why we got Dane so yeah. early. We wanted to lock that in so you don't take any risks with your leadership. We know he's got a, a really good respect of the group already uh, in terms of the players that he plays with at Lancashire. And obviously, we have got quite a few local boys there already, having retained Sakib Mahmood and, and Matty Parkinson. So, in that respect, uh, it's nice to know that we've already got that in the group. Name right at the top, though. Central contract, though, Josh Butler. How nice would it be able to have him throughout the entire competition? Look, hopefully from his point of view, he's playing a lot of <laughs> test cricket, but um, obviously we'll be blessed to have him when he's available for you know a couple of games, hopefully at the start. So uh, fantastic to have that, and, and it was fantastic to lock in the, the two youngsters as well who are you know very, very good young players. Thanks, mate. Right, back up to the cafe with Rob Key. I have another Manchester original in Saqib Mahmood and someone from the Welsh Fire in Tom Banton. Start with you, Saqib. You've got Parnell and Santner. Happy with that? Yeah, I mean, Wayne with his uh, you know, left arm variety and uh, Mitchell Santner as well. Haven't played with him before, but you know, playing at Old Trafford, um, you know, offers with ball, bat, and field. So, uh, yeah, happy. Chance as well to learn off someone like Simon Katic as a coach? Yeah, definitely. Cat was around a little bit this summer, um, worked with him a little bit, but I'm looking forward to spending a bit more time with him in the uh, 100 next year. Let's have a look at another name you got down here. Dan Christian, come across him much? Yeah, I did. He, uh, he got hold of me this year, so it's, uh, <laughs> it's quite nice to be playing alongside him rather than having to bowl at him uh, next year. Tom, let's have a look at the Welsh fire. Are you happy? You were picked, obviously, earlier on. Um, happy with your side? Who did you go for then? Welsh fire, a bit of experience. Plunkett and Tender Scarter. Yeah, no, it's obviously nice to have those guys on board. Obviously, we've got Stark and Steve Smith. Um, I'm not sure I'm really looking forward to facing Stark in the nets, to be honest, or Plunkett. But, yeah, no, it looks really good at the moment. You got a chance to work with Gary Kirsten, Treskothic, who you know yeah. well. Yeah, um, obviously I've worked with Tres a lot this summer, which was good. And then obviously with Gary as well, he's from South Africa, so um, yeah, he's quite good friends with my dad, I think. So yeah, my dad's <laughs> been going on about him a bit. So. <laughs> that will help. But you also you're going to have Mitchell Stark bowling at you in the net. So that's going to be a, an experience. <laughs> Yeah, I think um, I'm going to have a lot more throwdowns, I think, uh, than facing him <laughs> in the nets, to be honest. Yeah, I'll try and avoid facing him. All right. Well, back to you, Isha. Just get Trez to throw some more balls at you. <laughs> right. Uh, time for a break here. We've got two rounds to go. It's all hotting up. What are the teams going to do? Don't go anywhere. It's a quick break.
Welcome back to The 100 Draft. Get all the latest news and views on what happens tonight at skysports.com forward slash The 100. We have two rounds still to go. Still a little bit to sort out. As an example, Birmingham Phoenix don't have a wicketkeeper. They have four picks left to get one. But now we can talk to three of the most destructive white ball players. Is an absolute jaffer from Archer. Has he done it again? He has. Andre Russell. Into the crowd for another six. Butler on the charge. What a day he's having. Edge. Dre Russ. Look at him. The first World Cup 100 for Joss Butler. The plan works. Joffrey Archer gets another. That's a nice memory there. You leaping all around the place. Yeah, very good memories. How was your um, summer? Yeah, brilliant. Um, yeah, it's obviously one of the best summers we've ever had. Um, you know, some incredible moments. Like so now you get to the end of it and you, you start to reflect on, on some of the things that have happened and they really sink in. It's been yeah, pretty magical. What about this? What have you made of the draft? Uh, exciting, yeah, it's hard to follow actually. You know, <laughs> I'm trying to work out who's where. And, um, but no, I actually came to today thinking this is actually probably one of the most exciting days for English cricket. Um, you know, to come here and, and for us to have a franchise tournament about to start next year. Um, you know, this stuff, we're usually watching it on TV and, and putting your name in and, and hoping to, to be picked up. And now for us to have this tournament here on our doorstep, I think is such a massive moment for cricket in this country. Right, well, this is your team at the moment. Uh, you've still got four spots to go. What are you looking for from here on in, would you say? Uh, just, well, I just, I'd really love to put together, I think, a lot of a team that can be together for a long time as well. Um, I think that's quite exciting. You come here, lots of different strategies, and, um, but to have a side that's going to um, really grow and, and build a brand of a franchise, um, a lot of young local talent, um, I think, um, someone like Imran Tahir and Matt Parkinson working together, you know, leg spin's vital, and, and you look at the top 10 bowlers in T20 cricket, six or seven of them are leg spinners. So for two of those guys um, to take wickets, um, it's very exciting. Dre Russ, welcome along. What's it like to be playing in these leagues around the world and rubbing shoulders with different players, the likes of Joss Butler or Joffrey Archer, and just you offering them some experience and you gaining some experience to them? Is it fun? Of course. Um, you know, that's the nature of playing cricket around the world and playing in different leagues. Um, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we are warriors on the field and then we are friends. You know, sharing the chain, same dressing room with um, Jaffa now. Um, at least he's not bowling at my head now. So. <laughs> he will in the net, so that's if you net, you probably won't net. Nah, I just do throw downs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's fun to, you know, travel around and playing, you know, coached by different coaches and, you know, see how they work. And that actually help us as players as well and work on our game. So that's your squad at the moment with four names still to get in there. How are they shaping up? Do you know all of the names there? You've got to familiarise yourself? Because I suppose that's the challenge of going into different dressing rooms. You've got to get to know players as individuals and as players. Um, at the moment, about maybe three or four guys I'm not really familiar with, but majority of the names, you know, I've played with them, I've played it, um, against them. And um, I'm just looking forward for everyone to be sharing the same dressing room, same bus. And, um, winning, you know, celebrating together. Are you going to try and out-bowl each other, Joff? Who can bowl the fastest when Dre Rush and you got the ball in hand? Well, it's no competition, really. <laughs> <laughs> you know, speaking as a Lee. <laughs> you going to try and keep up with his hitting, then? Yeah, uh, he will win that one. He should win that one, anyway. But uh, I'll try as well. What do you think of the names that have been selected from your team so far? No, I'm very happy with it. Very, very happy with the team. I'm very good to see my boy, Dell. He's going to play with me at home as well, so all good, but we've got a very, very good team. Very, very good team. Right, well, we've got uh, four names from each side still to go. Let's just confirm the grid before we go into round six and then into the final round, round seven. Round six uh, is the £40,000 salary ban, and round seven is the £30,000 salary ban. All teams involved in both picks in both of these uh, salary bans. So let's get underway. Flem, you happy? 
Trent Rockets, you are on the clock. That's Hello, Keezy. Hello, mate. What do you reckon the Trent Rockets are looking like and what do they need? They've gone with a pick, I think, quite early, so we'll confirm that just as it's all been cleared. So, Southern Braver on the clock. Darwin Milan. I'm surprised actually that she didn't go a little bit earlier, David Milan. I suppose a lot of this is trying to work out one who everyone else is going to pick. And when you can get your domestic players, you look at the Manchester Originals have gone for Dame Villas early, just making sure they got their domestic player before anyone else would have wanted him. So someone like Milan's a very good cricketer. And especially in this, in the top order, you obviously want someone who doesn't waste any balls whatsoever. And those middle order players who run it around, they're not going to be as important. Then you want your hitters. That's why someone like Alex Blake has got picked up. We were speaking before we did all of this and we were looking at the overseas and we were expecting the likes of Andre Russell and Rashid Khan and all that to go quite quickly. There was a few different names in there early on. Your point was get from the overseas players what you can't get from domestic cricket. Is that what you're seeing panning out? Yeah, to some extent. We always thought the spinners were going to go quite quickly, all those overseas spinners with a bit of mystery. But it was all about, really, you're going to work it. How you pick your players later on or how you get your players, you can always cover off your batsmen generally. When you look around the world in the IPLs, they pick local batsmen and it's the all-rounders, the spinners and the pace bowlers that really do well and I think it's similar in this. So you've got two left arm quicks there for the Southern Brave I mean, Tumal Mills and now George Garton who's definitely got some pace and the picks are coming in quickly now. Northern Supercharge have gone with Nathan Rimmington. Left arm angles, Nass? Yeah, Vita. It's also like they don't, they're not bothered, oh, we've got one of those, you know, we're going to have another one. Um, London base sides have gone with a couple of left armers. It, they're trying to cover all bases. You might lose a few cricketers, you might get injured. So, it, you know, they are being very, very smart with their selections here. Last round, there were a lot of middle-order players, and now there's a lot of domestic players, some good cricketers. Someone like David Payne, when you get all the stats, he's been right up there over the last three years mm. as a wicket-taker, someone who bowls at Gloucester at the top and at the end, and that is the heartbeat of the game. That's someone like Andre Russell. That's why you get such value for money, because they're at the top, they're at the end of the bowling, and also they're batting as well, which David Payne isn't going to do, but that's what you want. Will Jacks at He's the a, Oval. What did he get in the T10? They mm. played a warm-up oh, yeah. game out. What did he get? I can't remember. The he got 100 in 10 overs. So he's someone I'm glad to see some young players getting picked up as well. <laughs> you can boo if you want, Jay, or something like that. <laughs> uh, right, moving on to the Manchester Originals. Their pick is in. We're waiting for it to be confirmed. London Spirit on the clock. Joe Clark. Another good batsman, really. Someone didn't have the best time of it last year, but when he was at Worcester, he's now gone to Notts. He actually did pretty well. So he can keep wicket as well, can't he? Yeah, well, that's also what you want. Do you just want a makeshift keeper, someone who can just do a job in this form? So on to London Spirit, who have four picks remaining, and then ooh, and then we're going on to Birmingham, who will pick the next one and the one after, see if Birmingham can go for a yeah, keeper. Adam really Rossington. Yeah, a good player, Hit, good hitter as Hitting, well. Someone yeah. who can do yeah, that at the top of the innings, yeah, wherever you put him in, shovels it into the leg side. A good hitter of a cricket ball, and also you get more than just one roll from him, so he will help with the keeper. Right. Birmingham have a keeper, and they need a, they've got an overseas player left as well if they won. They've not used it yet. They've gone Henry Brooks. Well, they're back on the clock again, and they've gone quite quickly, so we'll confirm that pick. Leg spin of Zampa. So that's the last overseas. Still need a keeper. There's some domestic keepers <laughs> looking for that <laughs> Birmingham slot in the next round. I think there will be. So we're on to London Spirit. I mean, it's interesting what Ben Stokes said about Ben Folks being able to potentially make a difference. You can make a difference in the shorter format as a keeper, Joss, can't you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Folks, uh, yeah, he's probably the best gloveman in the in the country. And like you say, if you keep into some of these guys, um, mystery spin, um, yeah, getting your best keeper, you know, folks can, <laughs> can make, a, um, make a big deal. Sorry, we Sorry, had an in Zach, Zach Grawley got, and Rob gets 10% of all of Zach's earnings. That's earning, absolutely so not true. You get 20% of yeah, all I've of Zach Grawley's. I've been leaving off you. They've been <laughs> up there. I've been, I've been defending you all the way. But he is a good cricketer. All <laughs> oh, right, OK. He hits it well. He can do any of these things. Forget about Andre Russell and all these people. I'm amazed he's only gone for that much. Should have gone up the top. Do you play with golf as old man a lot? He's a good mate. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly it. <laughs> so, Zach Crawley gone to uh, London Spirit. And so, the Manchester Originals are on the clock. It's all getting... Where are they going to go now, aren't This is your team, Joss. What do you reckon? Crunching the numbers. 
to have someone who bowls 90 mile an hour. <laughs> <laughs> someone who hits sixes. I tell you, Southern Brave have got plenty who can bowl 90 miles an hour. They look handy, don't they? And they do. Archer, Two Mile Mills, George, George Garton, Garton. Mm -hmm. Russell. Mm -hmm. Crikey. There you go, a bit of pace. There you go. I reckon it's coming anyway. Well, you've just got to like confirm it. Marchant de Langer. There you go. Yeah. I've faced him in the nets at Mumbai and that wasn't much fun, so <laughs> yeah, I'm happy with that. He's tall as well. Someone, when he comes in at you, he's so imposing. When he first came about in international cricket, played a little bit for South Africa, he was quick, but also he's massive as well, so he's an imposing figure. That's for... Oval maybe oh, no, need a seamer. What are the seamers they've got in there? They've got lots of spin. Tom Curran, Reese Topley, Vil Hune. And let's see. Oh, Chris Wood, left armour. Yeah, good variations. Case, yeah, variations. Left armour, pace off your classic sort of modern left armour. One thing I will say here is there is obviously the wild card picks that will be selected, one each team in July after the T20 blast, so we can have a look, or well, teams can have a look who, who's in form. Someone like a Pat Brown who came through a couple of years ago, he might get a go. So even if Birmingham tonight leave without a keeper, they could pick up a keeper in the wild card. Good point, yeah. And real incentive as well in, in the, the blast. Night. Have a good blast in and join up with the hundreds. So it's not the end of the road for people. And also injuries and international call-ups, etc. Welsh Fire have gone for Ryan Higgins, an all rounder. Had a very good year as well, bowled in the heart of the game, right in the middle generally, and then also at times did some work at the death. He's not the quickest, he can also bat as well. So he's similar in that Benny Howe type of mould, the Ravi Bopara. Those are the sort of picks you thought were going to go. Those are the ones you were looking at. Bryden Cass has gone to the Northern Supercharge. Benedict, you're down there. Benedict, what can you tell us about Bryden's year? Four-year-old uh, Seema originally played his cricket Eastern Province. He's uh, on a beefy's lot from Durham. So, right arm Seema. Right arm Seema, and he's gone for 40,000. The Southern Brave have gone from Alex Davies. Good pick. Good cricketer. Good pick. Yeah. Exciting cricketer, wicket keeper as well. Generally bats in the top three. Oh, boy. Small Bumble guy who up. ends up... Oh, Bumble loves well. him. Bumble goes on about him a lot. Very good cricketer. Ben Cox, a keeper, goes Atherton to Trent Rockets. Atherton <laughs> loves Ben Cox. His favourite cricketer thinks he's underrated. What, had more a, than Shimron Hetmeyer? Yeah, not quite as much as that, but he, <laughs> he had a quiet time last summer in the blast. Summer before in the finals day, he was absolutely brilliant. Good gloveman again and can smash it a long way. Right, so we're done with round six. We've got run round to go and that's how we're looking. Right, uh, Joss, let's go to your mob. The two, two names there, Clark and DeLanger. Yeah, Joe Clark, really exciting. I think he's, um, you know, forget he's still 21 or 22. He's been playing county cricket for a long time, um, had a fantastic record. Um, obviously moved to um, Nottingham this year um, and really excited to have him in the side. He's, I think he's one of the most talented young players in the country. Good. I think Ish has got some reaction up in the cafe. Ish. I do plenty of uh, movement up here in the cafe. I've got Mo and Ali alongside me. Birmingham Phoenix, Brooks and Zampa. Thoughts on that? Yeah, very good picks. Obviously, Henry's um, a good young fast bowler with a lot of potential. And um, uh, Zampa's obviously done really well for Essex this year in the T20 stuff, and he's been around for a few years now. Some high quality spinners in there then? Uh, yeah, Zampa is obviously going to give us a big boost, and Livy gives a bit of spin, and then there's a little bit of myself. Well, that, that, that's what I was alluding to. I was going to go to yourself before Livy first. <laughs> Jason, <laughs> thoughts thoughts on your picks? Yeah, we've got a we've got a strong setup. Yeah, we we started strong. Um, pretty happy with what we're what we're doing with it. Um, <coughs> and yeah, should be exciting. Chris Wood, good domestic player, left arm seam, tricks up his sleeve. Yeah, lots of tricks up his sleeve and a and a belting bloke, so that helps. It's all about belting blokes, isn't it? Hundred percent. You got to be a belting bloke, and then you get the Oval Invincible. Simple. <laughs> <laughs> what about the Southern Brave then, Anya? I know you're a bit of a badger. Are you happy with the, the picks that they've just had in this round? Yeah, for sure. Um, top order batter, another option as a keeper with Al Davies, and then um, another left arm seamer. Um, quite a lot of pace in that squad, which always tends to go pretty well in, in short form cricket. So looking exciting, looking pretty balanced squad. Um, just looking forward to the last couple of picks. Are you surprised Alex Davies didn't go a bit sooner? Hard hitting bat at the top and, and keeper option as well? 
Yeah, for sure. He's a versatile cricketer and he's done really well for um, for Lancashire for a number of years. So um, pretty lucky to, to pick him up this low down and um, he's someone who can do a really good job for us. Thank you very much for your time. Right, let's get to Rob Key. With a few southern braves, we have Mahela Jai Warner, Giles White, Mark Nicholas. Mahela, I'll start with you. Who have you gone for in that last round? You've gone for Davies, the keeper, and George Garton. Tell us about them. I think Garton's a young talent from Sussex, so everyone's um, raving about him. I think given that we've got some international bowlers, there's a good chance that some of them might not be available, so gives us a backup option. Um, he can learn a bit. Um, Alex Davis is a good keeper batsman. We've got um, Pope as well, so if he goes on his test duties, then we have a backup for that as well as a top order batsman, so we can use him in different places. Yeah, I mean, we're quite happy. It's not easy when everyone's picking. <laughs> um, I was going to say, is it getting a little bit more fiddly now? Well, it is. I think we just have to look at options to cover for guys who might get injured um, and uh, various other situations. Um, just make sure we cover all our bases. That's about it. You've done a lot of T20 cricket. Generally, the bowling sides are the ones that do well in that. What do you think it will be in the 100? Would that be any different? No, I think bowling is going to be vital. I think um, we need good bowling attack who can pick up wickets, who can control situations, bowl up front, middle and at the end and, and try and pick up wickets. It's not so much defensive, but, you know, try and keep picking up wickets because that's the only way you can control a batting lineup. So I'm assuming it would be the same for everyone, but have players gone that you might have wanted? Have you seen them going to have to quickly change? Well, yeah, I mean, few, um, but I think we're quite happy. But you, you can't have your dream team. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough, but I'm quite happy with, with what we got. And the GS bowls generally a pretty big surface, so you're going to have to have people that field well, do a bit of everything. Yeah, I think that was key for us, guys who can run fast between the wickets. There's a lot of twos and in, in GS ball, hit gaps. So we got a few guys who needs to do that role, but obviously we got guys like Andre, he's not going to be running <laughs> too much. He's going to keep hitting the ball. So I think, you know, we had that discussion. That was part of our planning because we got four games at GS ball. So, but we still need guys who can go and hit big on smaller grounds. You've probably done a lot of simulations of the draft as well. Is it sort of running to how you expected? Yeah, it, it's about trying to pick what Flem's going to take and <laughs> Bourne is going to pick and, you know, both at the back. So try and manage all that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thanks, Mahela. Changed a couple of guests here. Joss has stayed. Owen's come back. Welcome along to Chris Wokes. We'll get to Chris in due course. Uh, let's just confirm the grid with one round to go. Round seven, final round. Uh, two picks each for... The size, £30,000. Hello, Keezy. Uh, you just sat on my hand. Thanks very much indeed. Well done. <laughs> that might have hurt. Right, that did hit. You're not a light man. Right, are you ready over there, Trent Rockets? You ready? On the clock. What do you reckon then, Wokesy? Happy? Yeah, very happy. You ain't got a keeper um, yet. Yeah, that's the only thing we need to get done. <laughs> I'm sure they've got something up their sleeve. Um, no, no, pretty pleased, pretty pleased. Good, um, yeah, good mix. Um, and yeah, I think Shaheen Afridi was a good good buy at 60k. So um, yeah, plenty plenty there to work with. Another local lad going to Trent Rockets. That's Sorry. the theme. Stephen what? Fleming loves his yeah. local cricket. Wherever he's <coughs> been, Stephen Fleming loves local. And that's the theme in that side, definitely. You think Luke Fletcher would be one of the most popular picks in the whole of the draft? Really, he's such a popular yeah. cricketer out there. Bowls brilliant. Yorkers as well. He's a good pick. Are you texting Warren over? Here? Yeah, I am. Yeah, he's just sending <laughs> he's me some He's only over there. You yeah. go speak to him if you want. <laughs> yeah, I might actually. Yeah. Yeah. I'll yeah. tell you what, being up there as well, if you could get on people's screen time, it's absolutely outrageous. Your <laughs> Instagram stories go. You look around and someone's taking a picture and doing a story. <laughs> Uh, Max That's Waller cool. have got, has gone to the Southern Braid. A good fielder, um, obviously a, a leggy. So that's exactly what you were talking to Mahela about. <laughs> Oh, absolutely, and that's what you want. You're starting to get down to it. You're starting to look at the stats throughout the years that they're not obvious picks. Someone like Max Waller doesn't play a lot of cricket, any other formats of cricket, just only plays white ball cricket down there, so he's a good pick. Ed Barnard's gone to the Northern Superchargers. Welsh Fire are on the clock. I'm just looking at names that might we might have expected to go. I mean, Ricky Vessels, Luke Wright. What else have you seen, Nass? Yeah, Steve Mullaney, Laurie Evans. Laurie Evans, yeah. Danny yeah. Briggs? Yeah, Dan guys like that. Oh, hang on. Danny Briggs. Danny Briggs. There you go. As if by magic, Danny Briggs <laughs> appeared. And he's going to Cardiff. So Oval Invincibles are on the clock. Must be hard, isn't it, thinking about... 
they need. I mean, they've got this one buffer, which is the wild card next year. If they have forgotten, like it looks like Birmingham have a, get a keeper. Well, but this is where it was always going to be. You felt it was going to be fiddly. When we're trying to pick our teams, it's fine at the top. It's later on because you've got absolutely no idea who the people in front of you, who is going to get picked before you get the chance to do it. That's why they've all probably had. What do you reckon? You're going to need, what, seven options at every single level. Mm. But that doesn't matter as well because some of those seven options might have been picked by someone else earlier on. It's like a fiendish yeah. Sudoku where you just got to try and somehow think quickly. Well, actually, how much have you had in terms of talking about this night with the people? None at all? No Zero. influence at all? They clearly don't need my, my advice. <laughs> um, no, I haven't really had much at all, to be brutally honest. Um, I think they've obviously worked out between. There's obviously quite a few people behind the scenes. Um, yeah, I think obviously Morgs has had quite an input, but um, no, I, I, I've sat, sat back once I was, I was picked. I was uh, happy to pose for a few pictures and then <laughs> no, just wait and see. But I was always excited to see who we were going to get and so, um, no, it's looking really good. So Nathan Souter has gone to the Oval Invincibles. Ed Pollock, wax it, has gone to Manchester Originals. Morgan has left us. He's just ditched us. <laughs> just, you've just got to be there. slightly careful, though, because you start picking players in the position they bat for their county. Ed Pollock, top of the order. Zach Crawley, top of the order. But when you have the overseas guns and stars oh, come in, they're also bat at the top. Mm. You might then be batting awesome. people out of position in the middle order ah. if they do play. So... It'll be in, you know, you just can't keep having top-heavy players. Jay Dernbach crosses the Thames. Yeah, deft bowler, brilliant deft bowler. I think that's a good signing. Adds a bit of leadership as well, leadership quality. Yeah, I've been captain of Surrey in T20 for a couple of years now, but I always think when you're picking teams in the short forms, you just want deft bowlers. Jay Dernbach is absolute. Got to have a keeper, surely. Chris Wokes cannot be keeping. <laughs> Must be one. What are you trying to say, man? <laughs> 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 we need Jack Russell. <laughs> get Benny Hurl, Ravi, get him up to the stumps. Yeah. Good thing as well. You think about, look, take someone like Zach, he's going to be go. working with Shane Warne. I mean, how much yeah. are you going to learn off someone like Shane Warne, Ed Pollock, the same, Simon Cattish? That's why, that's the other wins that's a great pick, in the 100, the coaches that they're working with. These that's a players. super that's pick. That's a good pick, that, right at Ricky the end. Vessels, Ricky don't Vessels. worry about his keeping, we keep saying, but he's a yeah, proper player exactly. as well. So. Good well maybe the Birmingham pick. Beards, led by Daniel Vittori, had it all in hand after <laughs> all, and we were, we were not doubting them. The pick is in and is waiting to be confirmed. They're picking fast and I thought. I thought there was Chris, Chris Cook, keeper. Two keepers. Yeah, he's a good cricket. Choice, he's isn't a good cricket. And he can bat as well. He's not the worst at all. He, at times we've seen him and he's actually scored some good runs and done it at a good rate as well. So London Spirit with their final pick. What do you reckon they need? Keys as we look down here. We've got some spin. Got a young bat. Uh, Mohammed Nabi early on. I thought that was pick. an excellent yeah. pick. He played at Kent. Like, yeah. I was amazed at just how good he yeah, was. One of those that you just luck. thought he would be perfect for this. They have a lot of bases covered, actually. They didn't have an easy position in the draft, but they've done pretty well. No one has run out of time, have they? I was just, just going to come up and say that. If they do run out of time here, they go to the end, the last pick. You never know. They could want to buy themselves a bit of extra time, but then other players will have gone. Good in glasses, Warney, doesn't he? <laughs> I'd love him to run out of time. <laughs> <laughs> They're steaming up. They're fogging <laughs> up at the minute. Going for Lewis Reese. So that's their final pick. Again, he's someone who had an excellent year last year. Derbyshire did very well for the first time under Dominic Cork. They got through to finals day. Bowls and bats. Um, good pick. One of those, not an obvious one, but he's done well. I think we pretty much say good pick to everyone. <laughs> Your final pick, Joss, Eddie Byram. Benedict, give us some, what's Eddie Byram doing the last year? He's a left-handed Somerset player, hasn't played a huge amount, he's only played nine 2020 games in his career. So, a bit of a wild card, but um, we'll see how he goes. He's someone that, in four-day cricket, plays like just pretty correctly, pretty straight. And then we saw him last year at Taunton, and he has cleared out front leg and just tries to absolutely mow everything. So he's a player who's had to develop for the shorter forms. Laurie Evans has just gone to the Oval Invincibles, and he's had a bit of experience of playing around the world in T20 cricket and been successful with it. Just going back to Eddie, someone like Eddie, who will a young player who will benefit from being in and around 
the dressing room with the likes of Joss Butler. Oh, absolutely. That's why it's so. That's why there's so many wins from the coaches, everyone, the environment that you're going to be in. There's going to be big games as well, played at big grounds in front of big crowds. You're going to learn a hell of a lot about. Them. Right, Welsh fire. Pick is in. What do you reckon? Yeah, a decent cricketer actually. We saw him this year a fair amount. And again, not an obvious pick, but someone who did very well. Every time we saw him on the sky, he did brilliant. Superchargers will pick their final one, then the Southern Brave, and rounding things up will be the Trent Rockets. Three names to go, and then of course eight wildcard picks for the sides which will take place after the T20 blast, so <laughs> what's your mate doing up there? <laughs> he tried to stuff me earlier because I had a sheet with all the names on it and it was Shaheen Afridi. And he's constantly, before you come to me, going Shaheen Afridi, Shaheen Afridi. <laughs> John Simpson, keeper, is going to the Northern Superchargers up to Leeds. Southern Brave with their final pick. How are they going to complete their squad? Just trying to think of the other names that aren't around. Jack Taylor from Gloucester. Jack Taylor, someone as well you might Hain. think get picked up because he's known as one of those finishers with the bat who comes in and gives it a real touch. I'm surprised we haven't got that. Have the boy, what have the players been like up there? They've been following this very closely on the screen. Has there been a much banter and stuff between you? Actually, they've been quite engrossed in it, and they're looking at every single pick. You thought, actually, they'd get a little bit bored and walk off, and, but to be honest, they keep looking, and they're almost envious of everyone else's side. You have that thing, you keep yeah. seeing someone like Andre Russell go, or Aaron Finch, and then you start thinking, oh, we wish we had him. Have you hit the Sky card quite hard in that cafe, have you? <laughs> I'll tell you what, I've eaten my body weight in hummus. <laughs> <laughs> you like a bit of hummus, do you? Yeah, with the breadsticks that are thicker than normal. Craig awesome. Overton with international experience. And of course, played Test cricket in the Ashes this year. He's going from Taunton down to Southampton. And the final pick for the first ever 100 draft rests with Stephen Fleming and the Trent Rockets. And it is Luke ah. Wright at the last minute. Now, I can't remember what the NFL call it when the bloke gets picked in the last bit of the draft, but it's not particularly flattering. Righty, you're it, but you're in. He tweeted earlier, very pleased for Phil Salt, my opening partner. Very <laughs> hint, hint, I'm still out there, and he was the last pick. Very nice lad, very, very good player. Good for him. Right, Chris Wokes, Birmingham Phoenix, that is your lineup. You've got one more to go in the... Uh, wildcard picks after the blast. How are you, how are you shaping up? Oh, it's really good. I think they've, as I said earlier, I think they've put in some good research into it. It's good to see um, a couple of lads from, from domestic cricket that have gone well over the last few years um, get a go and at a good price as well, which is always good to see. We want to develop, obviously, our young English players. Um, but yeah, I think we've got a great mix. Um, you got Kane Williamson really in there to help these youngsters as well. Yeah, I think you know, and Joss will vouch for this. Is going and playing in likes of the IPL and things like that. You see the young Indian players developing from the overseas players, um, and vice versa. Um, I touched on earlier upstairs is Pat Brown. I'm, I'm looking forward to working with him and yeah. hopefully learn the knuckleball a little bit better. Um, you know, so I think it's it, it's great, and I'm I'm really excited about the competition and and being a part of the Birmingham Phoenix as well. Your mate Bopar has had a bit of a run to get in. A, a decent lick. Show you how He's important. Been pumping that... his tires a little bit. Has he offered you percentages? <laughs> so you, you've taken money off Zach Crawley and Bopara <laughs> no, now. Must be, you shouldn't say things like that. <laughs> long. But no, someone like Ravi Bopara had such a good finish. You think about his blast campaign and how important that was. Where he got to the point halfway through the season for Essex, he was dropped. He then came back with a point to prove, as those good players always do. Not with the ball this time, because in T20 cricket, he's almost done a, more with the ball at times, but. At the end of that blast, Essex ended up winning it. A lot of that was down to Bopara and how he finished games off. So when you look at the 100, you start thinking, people who can smack it at the top, fine. And then if you're a batsman who runs it around in the middle, which Bopara can do, you then have to be able to very quickly, you're going to have to change and be able to hit sixes. So you've got to be able to manoeuvre the ball around, but also hit boundaries. And that is exactly what he did. He pretty much got Essex all the way there and ended up winning it. You owe Keezy 10%, Rav. <laughs> <laughs> what were you looking up there? What was catching your eye as you were looking up at the big grid? I was quite jealous of the Southern Brave, actually. <laughs> I was just going through that. Got site. some pace there. Yeah, yeah, they have, yeah. Um, you know, Russell and Warner, you're two 
first picks. They're, you know, they're your first picks anywhere in the world. So I was just thinking that's a pretty handy lineup. Tamar Mills as well. There is some serious pace in that lineup. And generally, that's what you think, isn't it? That's where you're starting to look from the domestic players that you wanted. There's not necessarily lots and lots of pace. There's a few like Mark Wood, Gleason has got decent yeah. pace as well. Uh, so that's where the overseas can really add something. So they, uh, Joss is right. They look a very good side. Happy Mahela. Yeah, pretty good over there. What do you see when you look down there? What I agree with Joss, that sudden brave side. You better take some serious equipment with you if you're going to go and play <laughs> over there. The Aegeus Bowl can be a quite a fast pitch as well, with those all steaming in at you. Um, it's interesting as well, I was trying to pick Chris's brain about the five, five ball overs, ten ball overs really. Mm. You know, ten balls at the death maybe, do you want to do that? I won't be bowling many of them. Yeah, you probably don't want to be. So there are subtle changes as well within the change of format that all these teams will have to get used to. But let's not get carried away with that. It is still a game of cricket. and You get more runs than the other, you'll win. It's just a simple game of cricket. Don't overcomplicate it. But you'd say that they've picked pretty well. There'll be some very disappointed cricketers out there, but they have got that opportunity as a wild card. Tactically, that will be probably the biggest difference. I mean, it's 20 balls shorter than 2020, I know, and obviously that pushes things together a bit. But when you might use those blocks of bowlers if you're on a roll or Rashid Khan's on the ball, that gives the captain just something different that differentiates it from other white ball games. Yeah, definitely. I think it will take a little bit of time for captains to probably work that out, um, you know, work their team's strengths out and you know, maybe their weaknesses as well. Um, so you might only like, look likely to bowl your 10 ball over if you might, you might get a wicket at the end of, that, of, of, your, of your five balls. You know, if that fifth ball you get a wicket, you then might stay on, potentially. Um, but as I touched on to Nass, I don't think I'd be fancy bowling too many 10 at the death. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's going to be interesting. It'll, it'll, as I said, it'll take a little bit of time for teams to work out how to best use it. What are your stats like going for boundaries off the last ball of the over? Because if they're shocking, you can get rid of that by just bowling five. Yeah, That's true, actually. Yeah, I haven't out. thought of that. <laughs> but, well, yeah, I, I don't know. I'll have to, have to work out with the, with the, uh, <laughs> the stat man on how bad I am at that. We're going to focus in just briefly for um, a moment for the Welsh fire squad. Um, Johnny Bairstow is the keeper in the century contracted uh, player. Some names to highlight there with the likes of Danny Briggs and Ben Duckett going there. Tom Banton, of course, who's going to be uh, uh, down in New Zealand playing T20. The overseas, I'm going to highlight those because Mitchell Stark was the first pick. Oh, the second pick for the <laughs> Welsh fire was Steve Smith, who is at a very shabby location somewhere in <laughs> Australia. That looks horrendous. Are you going to swap that for Cardiff? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's uh, I'm in a nice little spot down here in Dremoyne in Sydney. But uh, <laughs> no, it's good to, to join you guys and looking forward to joining the 100. Yeah, what, what's it like to be involved in the 100? New competition, new tactics? I mean, it's not massively different, but there'll be subtle changes. How exciting is it to be involved? Yeah, it's going to be exciting to, to be in the first ever 100 ball comp. So, um, no, looking forward to joining the, the Welsh Fire. Um, Johnny and Starkey and... Uh, and the boys there, it, uh, it looks a good squad that, that they've picked up so far. So, um, yeah, looking forward to it. Have you had a chance to really look at the squad or have you just been glimpsing at it? I mean, you mentioned your mate Mitchell Stark's going to be there, so you've got a friendly face the other side of the dressing room. Yeah, yeah, I've had a little look. Um, I think Tom Banton's another good signing. He looks like he's a, he's a quality player. So, um, no, a few good boys there and, uh, yeah, it should be, a, should be a good tournament. Have you thought much about the tactics? I mean, it's not massively uh, different than T20 in terms of balls face, but there'll be some subtle changes. You might face 10 deliveries straight from one bowler. Yeah, it's a bit different. I'm sure it'll be a bit of a, um, a learning curve the first few games for the captain and, and how they want to go about their tactics and things like that. But, um, you know, I think it's really exciting for cricket. Um, you know, it's going to be full of... Um, full of fire and uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be really exciting. There's been a few, a few Aussies being selected in the various teams. Has there been much talk about it amongst the players out there? Oh, not a lot, no. Um, we've been sort of getting back into our domestic stuff back here in Australia. So uh, uh, I'm sure the boys may have tuned in early this morning to, to have a look at the draft. But um, yeah, it looks really exciting. It looks like it's all going really well. And um, the boys that are involved are, are going to be really excited to, to join the first ever 100 ball comp. How's it been for you since you got back after that phenomenal Ashes series? Have you taken in quite what you achieved personally? Yeah, look, it was obviously a pretty special uh, winter away. Um, you know, I loved every minute of the Ashes. It was, it was great fun and 
it's been nice to, to be back here in Sydney for a couple of weeks now and just rest for a bit and, and chill out and um, everything's sort of coming around quickly again. We, we start our summer here pretty, pretty quickly. So, um, yeah, uh, it's been a, a good couple of weeks off, but, um, yeah, I'm, I'm ready to go again. It was, it was a lad that got you out first ball the other day, and has he got any sort of English parentage or anything like that that we can borrow? <laughs> Cameron Gannon, I think he's American. I think he's played for the USA <laughs> That'll team, do. So. We can get him in over here. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> You've got a big summer ahead to look forward to over there before you get over here, though. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Pakistan and New Zealand out here this summer. Uh, and Sri Lanka for a few T20s as well. So, yeah, some, some good competition. And, um, yeah, looking forward to it. We'll see you over here next year then for the 100 when you'll be down in Cardiff, when the waters of Cardiff Bay will always be as crystal clear, blue and calm as you see behind you. <laughs> Sounds brilliant, guys. Look forward to it. Cheers, Steve. Right, let's head upstairs to the cafe in Isha. Yeah, plenty of the players still milling around. We've got Sam Billings, uh, Aka, Gordon Ramsay alongside me. <laughs> Gone to the Oval Invincibles. You must be pretty pleased with that lineup. I mean, you've covered all bases, haven't you? Absolutely, and actually Laurie Evans as the last pick was a uh, very sensible, very good player throughout that middle order and has done well domestically. But um, yeah, like you said, a very balanced side, uh, some, a lot of power actually. Fabian Allen, Alex Blake, Will Jacks uh, throughout that middle order. Um, very happy with that. Talk about covering all bases. Nathan South, a bit of leg spin. Fabian Allen, a bit of left arm spin as well. Sandy Blamachane, how many times have you been behind the stumps to him before? No, I've, I've, I've batted against him. Um, he's got a lot of tricks, and uh, especially in the IPL on those kind of used pitches at Delhi, he, he's been fantastic the last couple of years. So um, it would be great to be on the same side. And um, look, Sunil Narayan, those mystery options in, in, in any, any short format uh, around the world has been incredible. So uh, yeah, two brilliant picks there. And how do you mind being on the same side as these guys, Sam Kerr and Jason Roy? Well, yeah, he normally abuses me every time I play against him. So, no, it's good. Um, home ground, home boys. So, uh, like I said earlier, the Oval's arguably one of the best grounds in the world. So, uh, well, they keep telling me every single year. So, um, <laughs> no, it's, it's great to have that core of the side. And, and look, another, another Kent guy uh, in Alex Blake as well. So, we've got that kind of homegrown stuff as well. Jason's talked about having top blokes at the Oval Invincibles. You'll be pleased with Sam Billings, no doubt. Adil, got Adil Rashid alongside me. What about that top order? Chris Lynn, Aaron Finch, you've got a bit of Tom Cole Cadmore in there as well, Adam Lythe. I mean, very unstoppable, well. isn't it? Very happy with it, very happy with the top order. Destructive players, Finchy there, uh, Lynn, like you say, Lythe, local players as well. So mm -hmm. I'm sure, you know, our top six, seven uh, batsmen are set there and looking forward to seeing some fireworks. What about the, the overall balance of the squad there? No, very good. Like you say, we've got uh, hard hitters, we've got some spinners, all-rounders, death ballers, so everything's covered and, yeah, so looking forward to that now. Yeah, very strong lineup so all the way through. No doubt a, a lot of domestic players that have missed out. Let's go over here to Jason Roy, Sam Curran, <laughs> Tom Moody at the Oval. Yeah. Have you had a chance to work with him previously? No, never worked with him previously. Had a couple of phone calls and um, he seems like a great fella, so... Looking forward to getting stuck in. Some good picks in there. Very good picks, I think. Um, we've got every basis covered. We've got some fast bowlers at bowl 90, some extremely good fielders, um, some young punks in there as well. So, yeah, I'm really excited, yeah. He's definitely not speaking about you. <laughs> Are uh, you? No, no, no. no. Will Jacks, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> A few Surrey players in there. A very strong looking side. Thank you guys for your time. Let's head over here to... Mo and Ali, you've got Ravi Bapara with you as well. Jofra Arch is just finishing off his chicken. Uh, <laughs> Birmingham Phoenix, happy with your squad? Very happy, yeah. Um, we got, a, I think we picked a smart team actually. Um, guys that do well. I'm really looking forward to playing with Ravi. Um, his breath stinks all the time, so I'm going to make sure <laughs> I remind him that he brushes his teeth every morning. I'm sure the chicken would have helped with that, Ravi. <laughs> good, good to be picked up? Uh, yeah, delighted to be picked up. Um, I think we've got a very smart squad. Uh, the two boys in charge uh, obviously know what they're doing. Uh, they're smart boys, and I think the dimensions of the ground uh, give our team a very good opportunity over there. What about the Southern Brave? At the start of it all, you said Andre Russell. You got your man. What about the rest of them? Nah, the rest of the squad is good. You know, I have a lot of local boys in there, so I don't think that the camaraderie won't be too, too bad. You know, um, everyone knows it. Well, I think everyone there should know everyone. 
but everyone's in the South Cup, so, you know, a great team. Hopefully we, we go all the way, smash these boys. <laughs> Very, very strong team indeed. You picked Seven up Max jump. Waller at the last minute as well, a leg spin bowler. <laughs> Happy to be playing against Ravi? Uh, um, well, I've got to get a game first. <laughs> <laughs> we were just talking about that. We were saying <laughs> yeah. it's going to be hard to get a game here yeah. with all the players. Tight. Lots of ballers. Got, we've got two left armers, two guys that ball at 90, you know, so I might miss my name, you never know. But um, yeah. yeah it would be nice if he misses out. I'm sure you'll be the first one on the list, Joffre. Right, back to you guys. Hey, thanks. We're going to walk our way through the various squads that have been selected here tonight at the draft with the help of Joss and Chris and NASA and then Rob Keyes will be talking to the various coaches that have selected these squads. Uh, they had the first pick today, Trent Rockets, and they went for Rashid Khan. Got a beautifully balanced squad. What do you see when you look down there, Nas? What are they doing there? I think they're covering most bases. You've got your left armers, you've got some mystery spin in there, you've got arguably the best white ball bowler of the last four or five years in Rashid Khan. So I think they've selected well. Noticeable with um, Stephen Fleming's squads. He likes local lads. He likes to build that culture of people who know each other. Stephen Fleming is a serial winner wherever he's been in this format or 2020 format. So that will be a very difficult side to beat, in my opinion. Well, let's hear from the serial winner, as Nasser's just described him. Is he embarrassed over there, Keezy, or what? Has he taken it on the chin? Is he talking nonsense there? Do you like local players or what? Yeah, it's a great assessment from Nas. <laughs> Getting a few chuckles from behind, but um, no, it, yeah, it, he's right. It is, it is important because you only get three or four days before you start, so you, you can't have any grand plans to create a, a team environment. It's got to happen slower than that. And uh, the more guys get to know each other and familiar with the surroundings, and you've got a chance to start well. Did it get trickier the longer the draft went on, did, or did it go to plan? You would have done a lot of simulations and a lot of different squads. How hard was it the later it went on? Yeah, it did get hard. From my point of view, there's a, a lot of um, players that have been playing that just don't get the chance to see. So the, the boys here play a big part and, and a lot of trust around uh, their assessments. So, uh, and it's just about them balance and personality. So a whole lot goes into it. And yeah, there's a, a number of sheets that I'm pleased to throw in the rubbish bin now because <laughs> it, it occupies your thoughts for a few days. So not, nice to, to get it done and, and, and we're very happy with how it looks. Cheers, Fred. Thanks, Kizzy. Right, on to the Southern Brave. Joss Butler's a little bit envious of some of the names that have been selected here. The Southern Brave picked first, Andre Russell. That was the second pick of the draft. David Warner was their second overseas picked in that first round. They've got some local players in there. Pre-selected James Vince, selected Liam Dawson as an example. But pace throughout, how happy is Mihaela? Keezy? Yeah, we were with the Southern Brave. Sorry, we were just talking. He was asking about some of the players. Um, Mahela, we spoke a little bit earlier. Has that gone to plan? Yeah, I think, um, like Flem said, we wanted to keep things a bit local as well. So we managed to get the Sussex bowling attack together. I just have to make sure that they don't party too much, <laughs> the Caribbean boys. But, um, um, but we missed out on a couple of the Hampshire lads. I mean, the other guys picked them up, but we got two key players. But I think overall it was trying to get a good balance. Um, few right-left combinations in your top order to make sure that, you know, you have that um, variety. Bit of pace, bit of spin, and, you know, see how things go. So what happens now, then? You just go back to Sri Lanka? When will you start thinking about the teams and getting them ready? Well, I think go back to Sri Lanka because the tournament's in another 10 months' time. But, you know, keep an eye on guys, and obviously we've got a team um, set up so they'll make sure that, you know, everyone's... Uh, you know, on the ball, but we got a English summer to deal with as well. The early part of the summer, see how the boys are going, who's in form, and what we need to do, and then prep them. Probably, like Flame said, we probably have a week before the tournament starts. Thanks, Marla. I mean, Morgan's rejoined us, having given some discussion points to add to Shane Warne and his London spirit. We're kind of London spirit in due course. We're going to have a look at the Northern Superchargers. Aaron Finch was their first selection in the draft as the overseas. They went for Majib, the spinner, as their second overseas player. What do you think, quickly, of that squad there, Nass? Adam Lyth, local player. Adil Rashid, local player. Yeah, they've gone for a, a solid gloveman in Ben, folks. Yeah. Which I think they're going Brilliant to Brilliant gloveman. Brilliant. I mean, I, I mean, as in, that's what they, they're focusing on, is keeping... Um, as opposed to someone just at throwing them in, like a Ricky Vessels, who's an exceptional batter that also keeps. They've gone with a front-line keeper. Mystery spin in Majib. You know, Aaron Finch, for me, in this format, is absolutely top draw. He is outstanding. We saw in that World Cup, 
his leadership skills as well. I think he's a fine leader. So um, I think that's a good squad. Darren Lehman is their coach. He's with Rob. Is that a bit of fun? It's great fun, actually. Really enjoyable to do. Uh, obviously, you, you had a couple of plays you, you wanted to get at certain stages. Someone picked them up before or after. So, yeah, a lot of fun. A few Yorkshire players in there as well. That would be good, playing at Headley a lot. Yeah, it would be good, mate. And a few Durham players, but also some players from other counties. So that's the whole thing about the 100, picking up different players. Really happy with the, the list. And now it's about playing some entertaining cricket. Absolutely. Well done. Thanks, mate. Well done indeed. On to the Welsh Fire. Now, they're two overseas uh, players were Mitchell Stark and we've just spoken live from Sydney to Steve Smith. So that's just how they've balanced their side. Johnny Bairstow is their uh, England player, their contracted player. So let's head down and see what Gary Kirsten made of what's gone on this evening, Keezy. You busy boy? I'm trying to think of a different way to ask the same question, yeah. really. But was that, how was that? I'm going to come for a different answer. <laughs> No, it was good fun, actually. I think we enjoyed it. I mean, it's always amazing, these, these drafts, because we were looking at pretty much the same players, and um, you kind of you look at every team on the list there, and you think uh, everyone's got a fairly well-balanced team. And I think that's what we're all going for, is just to have decent balance, and we've got options when we need them. What about... Tell us about someone like Case Ahmed. Yeah, I mean, we've, we've... I'm sure all the coaches have heard about him. He's a young Afghanistan bowler. Um, got some great numbers behind him. Um, quite an enthusiastic young bowler and he's keen to do well. So we, we're excited to, to have him on board. Well done, mate. <laughs> OK, we're going to have a look at the Oval Invincible side. Now, their coach is Tom Moody and he decided to select first in his pick in the overseas section, or the top section, I should say, not the overseas section. Sun on the Rhine, Jason Roy uh, was pre-selected. So could it be Sun on the Rhine to pinch it with Jason Roy at the top of the order? Do you think Tom might do that? Ask him, Keezy. Well, someone like Narayan, you know, much of what you... Have you worked with him before? You've done quite a few teams. Yeah, I've done a few teams. Uh, yeah, I have worked with him. So, you know, I've got, uh, I suppose, a coach-player relationship with him. I've seen a lot of him, obviously, in the IPL and the Caribbean Premier League as well. So I'm pretty familiar what he can do. Did that go to plan from everything that you've prepared? I imagine it's been a few days of just studying up on teams. Yeah, well, collectively. Um, but, yeah, you, we're pretty happy. It's sort of, you know, there's always going to be the one or two that just fell away uh, just before your pick, but uh, we're, we're overall very happy with the squad. Right well on, mate. Thanks. OK, on to the Manchester Originals, who in the top picks went for Imran Tahir and Dane Villas, which surprised a few of us. They got some very talented young local bats in. They're going to pick out three, actually, Phil Salt, Tom Abel, and working further down the list, Ed Pollock. So... Away you go, Keezy, with Simon Katic. Yeah, Phil Saul. I mean, someone who got in an England T20 squad. Do you know much about him or you rely on some of the more local guys? Oh, look, uh, I certainly know a little bit about him. He's obviously just been picked up by the Adelaide Strikers for the um, BBL that's coming up this season. But, yeah, obviously, we utilise the resources here and um, I think, uh, yeah, very happy with what we've got. Someone like Dame Villas, captains at Old Trafford for Lancashire. Do you see him as a captain as well here? Definitely. Um, was around the group for a week during the uh, Vitality Blast this season and was really impressed with the way he went about it. And um, Obviously, he had a fantastic season himself. He's highly experienced and uh, has played international cricket. So, And obviously, the role of keeper as well is important in this form of the game with stumpings and run-outs and all that sort of stuff. So it's good to have that uh, level of experience at, uh, in the team. Thanks, Kat. No worries. On to London Spirit, whose coach is Shane Warne, but senior player. Captain Owen Morgan was involved, certainly in the latter stages, with your council. Happy with what you've ended up with? Yeah, very happy. What was the discussions at the end there? Uh, it's, it's about covering our squad with a balance of replacements. So when you've figured out what direction you wanted to go in that regard, you go to a player and then go and commit to it and, and cover it. A lot of the chats in the lead into this is based around having that balanced side and having options throughout the whole tournament, regardless of conditions. And I think Warney, Tim and Al have, have nailed it. Uh, some fantastic scene bowlers, great experience, a lot of spin options and, and attacking batsmen. Um, so, yeah. Well, Shane Warney's the head coach. He's now with Rob Key. You know, Warney, that Keezy was taking the mick out of your glasses? No, I wasn't. No, don't, don't listen to that. He's absolutely doing me. NASA was hammering you. I was sticking up for you. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I know exactly. You threw me under the bus, Keezy. It's OK, BFK. <laughs> right, OK. But no, anyway, uh, tell us about some of your picks. How happy are you with that squad? You didn't have an easy pick because you were towards the end of the first pick. You would have seen a few go. How did you find it? Yeah, I'm sure, like everyone else, it was um, quite tricky when the team before you picked the player you want. And it happened three times, so we owe Dan and uh, Cato a bit. But, um, look, at the end of the day, I think for Morgs, 
Uh, I think he's got a lot of variety in his attack. There's a lot of good spin options. There's some good pace. Uh, we've got a lot of experience and also some young blokes. So I think we've got a lot of variety in our attack and I think we've got a pretty good squad. What about someone like Owen Morgan? How important is he as a captain? Well, he's the best captain, uh, white ball captain going around. Uh, so we're very lucky to have him. Watching him captain during the World Cup this year was outstanding. I think he'll bring out the best in a lot of the guys there. I think they'll play better than they probably are playing under Morgs. Uh, I think they've got a lot to try and impress him as well. Um, it's been great fun working with him this week. Um, even though he hasn't been that sensible most of the time. <laughs> he said, just give us blokes to bash it. And I think we've got plenty of bashers, so we should be OK. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Birmingham Phoenix is the last one to run through. Chris Wokes is their England player. The century contracted England player. And he's given his opinion already on this. So I'm just going to come to you now. So, I mean, you look at those names there. And Kane Williamson, you know, that someone like that to go in, you wouldn't necessarily have been saying that, you know, 100-ball cricket would be someone like Kane Williamson's forte, but such is his ability to work it out, work out a new format. That's a fantastic sign. It is, but the lower the balls you face, the sides are going for quality bowlers. So you look at the Southern Brave side with that bowling attack. Are you going to go out there and bash that attack around? You still need high-quality players. You can't just have a side of bashers, to be honest. You still need smart cricketers to work your way through situations. Remember, it is only 20 balls less than a blast game. It's still plenty of time to adjust to situations. Williamson is the best batsman in the world at the moment to sussing situations, adjusting to situations. Top signing. Last time, Keys, then for you to ask the same question eight times. And no, no, slightly different this time, actually. And uh, did you enjoy that a lot this time, Dan? I couldn't say I enjoyed it a lot. <laughs> got, got rattled a few times. Um, you know, it's tough um, coming near the coming near the end of the pick and then having two picks in a row. So we had to make a few changes on the fly, but it was, it was fun in, in the moment. Left your keeper late. Very late. Everyone kept taking them just in front of us, uh, <laughs> the guys we had. So we thought we'd get two in the end just to make sure. <laughs> All right. Ricky Vessel, sounds like you were way down there, Liz, but well done anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so all the squads are in, but just a reminder that next July, each side will have a wild card pick, so they will add one more name to their squad. Come in, Keezy. Come in, Keezy. Final thoughts from you guys before we, we let you go. I mean, Chris, so much buzz around cricket this summer. New competition, bright colours on your shirt. How much are you looking forward to seeing the youngsters hopefully get involved? Yeah, I'm really excited about it. Um, I know all the lads are. Um, it's obviously been a great summer for us, for us all, uh, involved with, with the England team. Um, and hopefully it's the start of something, some, something new, really, I suppose, attracting more and more people to the game, in particular kids, um, and a new audience, really, I suppose. It's... Um, you know, I feel privileged and, and honoured to be a part of what hopefully is going to be a great tournament moving forward. But you know, I think you look down all of those teams there and there's some serious cricketers. Um, you know, there'll be some serious cricketers that have missed out as well. So it um, just shows the depth of, of English cricket. It's obviously in a good place, but I think this can take it to a new level. Yes, that's the point. It's the standard of the cricket with those names is going to be high class. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think that's what it's about, just condensing that talent uh, for us, and, and it just really excites me that we have a competition like this now in our country. It's, we see how the effect it's had for us who've travelled um, and experienced it, but now we take that back to our domestic game and, and we see the, the improvement, I think, for all of these uh, domestic players to rub shoulders with, with these guys. Um, the impact it's going to have for, for us um, as a cricketing country, I think, is going to be massive. I mean, it, improving the country as a cricketing nation and some of these players up there, but getting people involved, inspiring a few. Is that how you see it as well? It is. It's a huge part. I think the 100 will play a big role in that. But you, like Chris says, you go through every team. The quality of player in every squad is brilliant. And I think the public is going to be in for an absolute treat. The last word goes to England's World Cup winning captain on this night. Gentlemen, thank you very much indeed. You've done enough talking as of you. Thanks very much indeed. I mean, what a night. The first ever draft in British sport. 96 players have been picked. There'll be 96 happy players, a few disappointed ones. Should be a fabulous competition. Join us next July when we kick off the 100.